All right, look, unless you've been hiding under a rock, you probably know that a high protein diet will benefit you regardless of your goal. But what if you're one of those few people that just doesn't feel good eating a lot of protein? Some people get digestive distress. Some people get constipated. Some people just can't eat that much protein. What do you do then? Well, in those cases, amino acid supplements can actually be beneficial. Uh, essential amino acid supplements and branch chain amino acid supplements in particular can help with things like recovery, performance, muscle gain, and fat loss if you just can't hit your protein targets. So at the end, it's all about the context. If you can't eat enough protein, amino acid supplements may help. Oh my, okay, this is interesting you went <laughs> yeah. this direction. I just brought this up. Uh, Jason, uh, our good buddy, went to dinner at Mastro's last yeah. couple of weeks ago, a week, week and a half or two ago. Um, and uh, his wife was bringing up uh, amino acids and there's some brand that was, yeah. like, and I was trying to explain He sent to them to me. Picture. Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that, that's so funny. So they went to me first yeah. and they're like, <laughs> Adam shit all over it. So let me go to, <laughs> go to Sal and see if Sal does the same thing. The science guy. So the, okay. So I, I'm going to be, I'm sure you said the exact same thing as I did. And, I, and it sounds like it from your tip today, which was like, if you, I mean, obviously the goal, number one is to get everything through whole foods because you're getting all those benefits and more. So, right. Yep. But granted, I, we say on the show all the time, hardly anybody gets their protein intake. It's really difficult to do that. But then I said, then the next step after that is just using a, a, a protein powder because a protein powder, yes. it would still be the next best thing to do. And then, and only then if like you have issues with digesting, you know, whey protein, or you just don't what, don't like taking the protein powder. And so taking a handful of, you know, branch chain amino acid pills at the end of the night, because you were so low on protein could have some benefits to it in comparison to not. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, so, I was having a conversation. So that, and then I had a conversation with a family member who's uh, training for a jujitsu tournament. And um, he's talking about how he's having issues recovering. And I'm like, you got to get more protein. He's like, I try it's so hard. I can't hit those targets. My appetite won't let me. He's like, and I can try taking shakes, but I don't even feel like taking a shake sometimes. He goes, what about just a like a couple branch amino acid tablets? I said, well, in, in your case, you'll see some benefit. And it reminded me, I've had a few clients like this where they didn't want, the, the, they don't want to take a shake. Although, I'll, 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 just for the audience, one scoop of protein powder will give you more than enough Branching amino acids and essential amino acids. Okay, so rather than taking a, a scoop of something that's called essential amino acid supplement or whatever, a scoop of protein powder will do that and then some. So that's even better. But like I, like I said, I've had clients where they can't eat it with food. They don't want to take a shake. They want tablets or something easy. And then they can help. And if you look at the studies, because this, this always cycles, right? Our the supplement market tends to do these yeah. cycles every 10 years or so. And you'll see people selling branch amino acid supplements again. Is that their and they'll bring up studies? Yeah, is that their main focus? Is that uh, to market to people is that it's for recovery? And yes, like, this is the best benefit of like taking amino acids. Well, if you look at this, if you look at the studies on branch chain amino acids, that's leucine, isoleucine, and valine, or the essential amino acids. These are the ones that your body you have to consume them. Right, they're essential. You have to consume them. You can't make them. When you look at the studies on them, those studies that show that they're beneficial all the participants are not eating the the high protein diets that are recommended by like the strength community, right? right? Which is about roughly or close to a gram of protein per pound of target body weight. Like if you miss that yeah. and you're eating what the RDA says and you don't want to eat more protein, then yeah, you supplement with BCAAs, you'll notice a benefit. It just you'll goes to prove like uh, they know that a lot of people are, are low and, and deficient on some levels of protein. Yeah. You know, well, this is also why too, why, I mean, cause obviously something that gets that much traction and there's that big of a market. Yeah, people now, will notice benefits. Right? Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's what, how I explained to her at dinner. I'm like, listen, if, if I need you to be eating for optimal, right. I need you at 130 grams of protein. And you're hitting 40 grams every day. Yeah. And I give you some amino acid pills. Like, uh, yeah, you're going to, you're going to build some muscle. You're going to recover better. You're going to feel a difference. It's going to make an impact, but it's not the pills. It's that you were, you're so under on the right. protein that of course this, you would have seen that felt the same thing too. If all of a sudden you added a six ounce chicken breast on top of what you're eating every single day. Also, you would have felt the exact same benefits mm -hmm. as what you got from that. So it's not like there was something magical about the pro the powder or the pills. Yeah. So, so what, I, did, I was, go ahead. No, I just wanted to ask you more about the, cause uh, I actually didn't see it. She was just telling me the name of it was like super amino something. Yeah, and then she was saying like yeah. the, the guy who the, the doctor guy who sells it or whatever was talking about how it's at this special amino. acid. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's how they market to you is they, 
and this is by the way that that's no different than the creatine market. Yeah. I mean, the, every market they because everybody knows uh, amino acids are you know or not ever I shouldn't say that, but most people in the fitness space know that amino acids, protein powder is important, creatine is important. All these things are, and it's gotten so oversaturated that the margins driven the margins down made it very competitive and better for the consumer. Find creative ways. So yeah, now you have to yeah. yeah so yeah, now you have to find novelty angle. Now you have to find and this is pre workout same thing too, right? Because caffeine's the main driver that makes pre workouts really really good, but caffeine's cheap, so we got to find other things to put in it yep. and then they sell the other things as being yeah. so magical and so amazing when it's like no the the main ingredient is the most valuable thing yeah. problem is everybody yeah. now sells that has that so you got to find creative ways isn't to that funny because it's like then you know their direction is going to be like some exotic place in the world or some like, <laughs> yeah, you know, religious community has always done this and they've lived for like 120 years, <laughs> yeah. or, you know, like something like there has to be like a, a tragic story of like, I, you know, was in a car accident and my whole body burned to smithereens. And then I took these amino acids all yeah. of a sudden it grew on my skin back. Or I traveled to some weird part of the of the world, you know, some yeah. corner, like I saw berries was like this. Yeah. yeah that was like, I saw berries were popular uh, or became popular here in the States because it was like this Amazonian Modern Superfood, right? Monavi did it. <laughs> Full of <laughs> antioxidants. It's a, it's a blueberry's got more antioxidants than an, yeah, yeah. an a, a acai berry, or very yeah. close. It's just it's hard to say. So it's it just means most something. people are not familiar with it, and it tastes good. And mm -hmm. so it's like, oh my god, uh, this this is new thing. No, look, proteins are chains of amino acids. That's all it is. So amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. So if you take a scoop of protein powder, or you eat ten grams of protein, a complete protein, meaning it has all essential amino acids. Uh, you are going to have way more branched amino acids or essential amino acids or beneficial amino acids than three tablets. Essentially, three tablets of essential amino acids. In fact, the cheap amino acid supplements were just compressed protein powder into <laughs> tablet form. That's the best. Yeah, yeah. and they would, they would be called like Amino 5000. I remember I used to take these back in the day. Yeah. I used to take, I remember I bought a long time ago because, you know, I was a kid. I felt yeah, for every paying more for less. Bro, I bought... I don't remember what it was like amino 5000 or something like that and there were these massive big old pills huge <laughs> yeah, yeah like i, I, I can't I even those too. i'm not even exaggerating when yeah, i say yeah. like choking hazard style <laughs> tablets they were like think of the biggest tablet you could think of like a multivitamin tablet yeah, yeah. now make it like twice as wide that's what yeah. they look like <laughs> and the recommendations on the bottle and it, it wasn't was like even a bottle of, like eight of them yeah it was like a it was like a <laughs> oh my God. It like i did a the mini, same i did the same thing yeah bro it looked like a mini jug it was like this yeah and you had to take eight in between every meal yeah. that's what they recommend and i did it yeah, i took yeah, eight yeah. and yeah he did take each individual one it was just so <laughs> it would so have been ridiculous. easier to dry scoop whey bro, protein <laughs> i'll never a i'll never forget i figured this out it's you know through magenic that way i'm gonna pat myself on the back for figuring this out as a kid i was 16 years old i'm doing this every day and i'm like oh my god this is terrible you know, is it working? I don't know. And I remember I turned the bottle. I looked at the ingredients, whey protein. <laughs> it was whey protein that they compressed and put added a binder to make into freaking tablets. That's yeah. so great. That's what I was taking. Yeah. Whey protein tablets. That's amazing. I was yeah. so mad. But anyway, my the, the person I was talking about with, uh, you know, that I was just mentioning who's, who's getting ready for a tournament, I talked him into trying um, the Paleo Valley bone broth protein because he doesn't like other protein powders that make him feel bloated, gassy, doesn't like it. So I said, try the bone broth protein. It's the easiest. Like mm -hmm. I have yet to find anybody who hasn't tried it, who's, who hasn't said it's the easiest to digest. I, I know I know I'm late to the party on that, but I, I've been like ever since you got me to do that. That's actually what I've been, I've been taking that in more than anything else now. It's so easy. Yeah. I mean, it's and I could take 70 grams. That's why. That's why I find it's really nice is that, um, you know, rarely ever am I missing exactly uh, just 32 grams of protein. Yeah. It's like I'm missing more or whatever. And so- being able to scoop more, and in the in the past, if I were to do that with like a whey, just seventy grams of whey protein just doesn't yeah. sit doesn't sit right with mm -hmm. me. Where I can take that, and it's no problem. So, yeah. But I do have to say the the the, the chocolate donut flavor is the best one. It were yeah. I tried the other flavor. I was like, yeah. Meh. I wasn't I wasn't like as as impressed. It's just with chocolate though, right? It just tastes like donuts. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I think I, you know what's funny. They're gonna yeah, probably start like branding chocolate it, donuts. Start branding it chocolate donuts. You know what it is? Is that it's a so bone broth or collagen protein is um, flavorless essentially. If you ever have pure collagen, yeah. you add it to water, it doesn't taste like no. It. I, they have it. I've tried it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have. They tastes have like ones. almost nothing. Yeah. So it's easy to flavor. Mm -hmm. So you can very easily make it taste really good. Whereas like plant proteins are really yeah. hard to make yeah. taste good. Yeah. Really, really hard. Yeah, yeah. Egg protein. Rough. Did you guys ever take egg, egg protein powders? I did. Oh. I did for the longest time. I did the pump. 
Oh, you mean just the, you that's that. just whites. Nice yeah. methane. I did that for a long time. <laughs> yes. yeah. The aftertaste. Yeah. The, sulf- the sulfuric yeah. smell. That Everything that comes out. I actually methane. really liked the the egg white pump thing for a Did you make your shakes with that? Yes. So you fr- do that fr- yeah. and then add protein powder. Yeah, it, fro- it frosts that up. Yeah, you, know, you didn't know that, like because oh, the egg, oh yeah, the egg white makes it all frothy, and so it makes it actually made the shakes better. So I used to make the shake, and then I'd do a I don't remember what the pump like how many ratio or how many pumps. I remember were. that it was like a jug, with yeah, a big giant little, one and a big yeah. really smart. What they did is they put they, it's brilliant. It was just a bunch of I'm gonna give someone a, su- a supplement idea right now. It, what it was was a, it was egg whites pasteurized, so and you could just add it to whatever you want. And bodybuilders and everybody wants the egg whites, right? Because yeah. it's just pure protein. There's a market for egg yolks. If someone just had an egg yolk pump or something You've like that. You've always said that. I know. You've yeah. always said it's that. way more muscle building. So why wouldn't you just do the whole egg though? I mean, that's what, I mean, if that case, then well, just I'm do the just whole. We're trying to do novelty, bro. We're trying to do... <laughs> <laughs> this is the supplement market. This yeah, is the market. I mean, you're exactly. right. Yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Average person's like, I have eggs in the fridge. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's more like a counter knowledge. So then there's this weird like appeal to that, right? That's yeah. it. You've been missing the most muscle building oh part of the Oh my God, I haven't been eating the best part. Today's giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Also, we got a sale going on this month. MAPS Performance is half off. And then we also have a fitness bundle called the Extreme Fitness Bundle that has MAPS Hit, MAPS Performance, MAPS Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide that's also 50% off. You can find all of those with the discount code and everything by clicking on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Hey, this weekend was your birthday weekend. What'd yeah. you, uh, what'd you go oh, do? I saw you yes. drove the car. Yeah. I saw you drove the car. I got to, yeah, so I, I got this car, like it was back in November, I think, but I haven't even been able to like physically see it. I immediately shipped it to my friend who- Was that the first time you saw it actually in person? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. I thought you have actually had already been down there. Oh, that's no. great. Yeah, so I shipped it. Is my friend like he used to work, uh, and he was on that show Overhauling with Chip Foose. Oh, yeah. and so I, high school buddy of mine, like uh, we played football together and stuff. And so um, actually, we were in in auto shop together, and it's interesting because like a lot of the guys that were in that class ended up doing a lot of. They're they're big in like the car world and everything, and I don't know anything now. Yeah, you know? <laughs> and so I'm just like, oh, please help me, dude. Let's 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 build a sick car. So uh, yeah, so I finally got to like go down there and had to register it with the dmv and all that and still did you take it home or is they still working on it? still working on it yeah so he actually just made it drivable just enough so i could like go to the dmv and i kind of was like pressing on it a bit because i wanted to you know get a good feel for it and like uh, suit the car it was actually good because that way i i see that i'm going to see the difference of like how it drove you know and it's sort of are uh, we gonna tell the audience what kind of car this is 1969 gto sorry Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah Judge. That's one of my favorites. The judge. One yeah. of my favorites. So what you what are you doing to it? Uh so you like an LS a lot. swap. Yeah, yeah. LS swap uh, get you know, increase my horsepower like five hundred and twenty something horsepower, yeah. and then I'm gonna get a uh, new exhaust and uh suspension and um also new like sound system and um, you know, lot, lots of other like accessory kind of stuff, but like it, nothing major, like rims, tires, all that kind of are stuff. Are you going to make it look classic, like original, or are you going to do like the cross kind of where it's, it looks sort of like resto mod kind of style? So you get like, uh, it, it looks classic enough, but it's, it's definitely like modified. Yeah. Yeah. So I have like upgraded looking rims. I've upgraded like, uh, little, um, additions to, to the paint job and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's not going to be like stock. Yeah. yeah. Is that, so is that what yours would be considered? Yeah, my right resto like mod. Yeah. They're both. Yeah. That's what I, okay. Yeah. You have Where this. It's like, it's, it's, it doesn't look too, it's not. Yeah. Too you have the classic look as far as the body and the interior and stuff, but then you've got a lot of things that you've switched out, like the Rams that like, once you put yeah. an LS engine in it, it's now it's not a, sure. a re- yeah, yeah. Right. So you're now, I like, I prefer that. I know so for I. collectors, uh, and if I if I was buying the car for like a long term investment, yeah. you always want the original. You know, it holds more value if you do the whole yeah right. Original but I, thing. I mean, I'm driving it. You yeah. know what I'm saying so, and like I want what I want, and I want it to feel. So I'm, sound. I'm the only one that doesn't have a, a you. Classic. You got to get one. I, I'm thinking what we we're like at Barracuda or like a, like a Hemi. I love of some sort some Challengers, Challengers and yeah. Chargers. Yeah, the yeah. plum purple. Yeah. I, yeah. Oh yeah. Dude, I wish we could fun. get you to do it. I would love to. I love for us to because that's just what, be a waste on me. Like you know, I'm not a big car. I mean, I would like. 
like it for a bit and then you know yeah i see i don't know about that if you think i mean i don't know it really depends on like if you could even see yourself on like a saturday or sunday where we'd meet up and we would go maybe yeah, yeah. cruise like and so if you see yourself you could get away for a few hours on Saturday or Sunday on, um, you know, nice days. I could totally see us all well, linking up and driving. Yeah. I mean, I was really motivated because my dad and I used to, uh, we, we connected a lot with cars and drag racing and like, um, you know, a lot of like hot rod like shows. And so that kind of like, I had my truck and then I had to sell it once, once I, um, you know, was making a down payment for my new house. And so ever since then, there's just been this void there. <laughs> and like, you know, the kids are at an age now where they're interested in cars and they're interested in like cool stuff like that. And I'm like, well, now's the time if I'm ever going to do it to kind of, you know, bring that back. So we, we plan a uh, hot August nights is in, uh, Reno. And so we're going to do that, uh, this awesome. year with my dad and yours uh, will be done by then. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Oh cool. uh, yeah. Yeah, hopefully, like into March. Like I'm pressing, pressing Ben to to uh, get it done. It's the difference, like uh, you know, a muscle car. The difference of 500 horsepower in that versus like a modern 500 horsepower car feels no. way different. Oh, it it's, it feels unbridled it's scary. and dan- yeah. 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 Yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's yeah. Make it dangerous. <laughs> Let's make it feel like, dangerous. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> 300 horsepower. Ah! Like, oh. I'll tell you what, though, you get a lot of attention from dudes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, thanks, bro. Yeah, hey, yeah, like, yeah. Hey, it's like getting buffed in the yeah, gym. Yeah, it's like getting buffed in the gym. All, hey, all the things that we do thinking to get more women yeah, attention. More dudes yeah. <laughs> no, I, all old guys, all guys our age, they're just like, yeah, dude, like knuckling up. Yeah, and, you're yeah. cool. I had a guy stop me at the parking lot the other day. You're fit, bro. I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> Can I touch it? Yeah. No, it was kind of cool though. Anyway, speaking of muscles and stuff, did you guys? I, I sent you guys that picture of my my one was fourteen month old standing up on her toes. She's yeah. a little oh, little. Yeah. Mu- oh yeah. God, yeah. my wife's genetics Stepping are strong, bro. Bellies, yeah. She's got this yeah. huge little calves, dude. Oh, yeah. this little baby. I'm no, so they def- they definitely have mama's genetics for <laughs> yeah, sure, bro. I'm so, so excited. It's you guys be have to no see you. idea. Uh, I get so many DMs of like uh, people with like sending me pictures of kids that have like root ridiculous calves and i just don't send them to you guys they're like don't show sell down this <laughs> hey, i got two kids now with them all right <laughs> i was like I, I was like why like why are you roasting them oh, so hard like, God. Yeah. <laughs> you ever see i mean sometimes you see kids and you know you look at them oh no like, you can oh abs- they're gonna be no of course yeah. i mean you could tell on you can tell on your kids already i mean i can tell even on my son that he'll have better than i did just because he could tell by his symmetry and his, yeah. he's a little bit thicker than i already was he's by no means he's not thick like your kids are but they're, he's like thicker than i was so he's not going to be the skinny lanky did kid I, like did I, I was. tell you that uh my three-year-old jessica was reading uh to him a, ch- a kid's version of the bible and they were talking about like uh genesis right cool and he refers to adam and eve as adam and katrina <laughs> <laughs> that's so epic she goes who are the first people the first people yeah, in the bible yeah, yeah, like, adam and katrina <laughs> yes yes that's so good that's so good yeah. katrina making yeah. you eat that apple what else did you uh what else did you do down there? So I uh and it's funny because um this is like what's exciting to me is like an adult and um you know an old man that's like, dude, I just want to like relive my past, you know. So <laughs> I, you know, we, I like orchestrated it all. So I like picked this house that um was like way out in the boonies, uh mm-hmm. down there in like Aurora Grande. Mm-hmm. And um I don't know. They might be a fan. So I don't know if like, I'm just going to say it. Yeah. We, we literally just like jammed like so loud, like (laughs) like we brought all our equipment in there and like closed off the doors. Thankfully we weren't around a lot of other like properties. Cause I was like any sound complaint, we're done. Yeah. It's not going to work out, but nothing. And so we're like, okay. So we just kept going and like recorded some stuff and like, we just geeked out and played like really loud. So this is the same group that you did with Chucky last year then. Yeah. So and now is this becoming an annual trip for you guys? I mean, it's kind of like if we can make it work, like at any chance, I just kind of throw it out there and see who can, who can make it. So it was like just me and my friend who's a drummer. And then, um, uh, my other friend who I played, um, at Chicago in, in, uh, college football, we played together too. And ironically, like he's sort of a pastor of this church. And like my friend Ed is, is also working at that church with him. And th- I knew them both from different timelines while I was out in Chicago. So oh, interesting. It's just a weird, it's like both of my best friends in college, like ended up, they're now friends and working together. After the fact? After it, the fact. Oh, that's wild. Yeah. And, and it's funny because he's like really into like, 
it's funny because he's really into like you know happy like chill music and stuff and like so he always makes fun of us for being like really like like yeah angry. crazy angry music do any of them play in the in their church because there's a lot there's some incredible I, they, oh they do well yeah ed used to play a lot but actually he's uh he's kind of stepped away from that but his son is kind of you know he plays drums and uh but he used to do some some music like that like but they have like worship pastors and stuff. Well, there's that. some because the place, I, one of the, the churches I go over here, they have they have a band that opens up and plays music, and uh -huh. some of the singers are like, "Wow, I know. really good." Yeah, I lot. wonder how many like talented people there are that just tons. stick to that. There's there's tons. I mean, and there's so remember many when we were in Nashville them. and we were oh, just yeah. going up the street yeah, of like, true. it's like, oh my god, like how are these people not on these like major did, labels? And you did know? I tell you guys the conversation that Katrina had with John Deloney about coming out to Nashville? Oh, no. uh, it was pretty funny. It was just a, this was actually just like a couple weeks ago. Uh, yeah, she was on the phone with uh, with John and talking about coming out there. She's like, oh yeah, I, I, you know the guys want to plan a trip out there, and John's like, yes, I want you guys to come out for a week, bring your families, it'll be great, and. Chris was like, yeah, I was looking on the counter and I see Morgan Wallen's going to be there this week like that. And he's like, oh. and she's like, <laughs> she's like, what? You don't like Morgan Wallen? He's like, there's a Morgan Wallen on every corner in Nashville. Yeah. She's like, so she's like, you go, he's, he tells her like, you walk down the strip and there's a Morgan Wallen in every single bar that's playing music. There's right talent there. everywhere. Just yeah. that. Just, and I, I mean, there's two things I that totally I, I that. take from that is one, the, yes, I know that because we've been down in Nashville that there's that kind of crazy talent, but also too, like, how many uh, artists are manufactured? Uh -huh. Like, especially with exactly the way the way, the way we the way we've learned to hack We're music and yeah, yeah like uh, what's his, your uh, what Rick Rubin said about how we mm -hmm. like it's we've lost that you know purity where an artist is putting out the stuff that they put in their diary and they put it out because they love it where now we've we're trying to hack everything we're trying to hack an algorithm where we unpack what we're, is working and then we just modify whatever we're doing to fit that mold plug in the formula yeah, we yeah. Got the distribution. and so yeah. you know and again I, i'm a morgan wallen fan so i like enjoy his music or like that but i don't know enough to know like how much like he's been manufactured or not like yeah. is he like just a an example of somebody else that's been just like planted speaking to that like it, that that was that's part of my favorite thing about hanging with like some other guys that are like really still into music and stuff it's like you you get like it so we we play this thing it's basically like what you used to do when um uh napster was out right and you go download like a song and you, you and people would take turns and kind of like here check this song like mm. you try and kind of introduce people to new artists and stuff that's out there and uh so we do we kind of like to spend some time doing that on YouTube just for videos and like, Hey, I've I, like, I dig this and this artist. And so I got like a lot of new, um, uh, artists and things that were just interesting. And it's like, I would never listen to that normally, but I see like the appeal yeah. of this. And it's, it's, there was this one, I forgot, I forget the name of it, but there's this guy who really good guitarist, but the entire video He's like, he's looking at the, the camera and when he plays like, nir, 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 and he, he, he like makes notes, his, his mouth kind of mumbles it. And so he, it's like, he's talking this whole song and, and it's like, he, he made it, it was so creative. Like he made it. So it was like, he was, he was trying to ask this girl out. His heart gets broken, like all this stuff. And it goes through and it's literally just the guitar playing, oh, wow. but it, but it plays it to like. And he's just like kind of miming it the whole time. Oh, wow. It's really weird. But I just like, wow, like I never would have watched that. So you know, many creative people out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, so, crazy. so much creativity. You, you had a crazy weekend, Adam. You were hanging out with some yeah, I very mean, successful uh, crazy, people. Crazy in a different way, right? Like not like uh, crazy wild or like over the top, like fun doing stuff. Just I, you know, I had an opportunity to meet um, my Hampton group. I got to meet them in person, you know, and, you and know. You, I, this is a group of like successful individuals who are trying to like yeah so elevate I, each other right obviously if you've listened to the show long if you've listened to our show long enough you've heard me and or I, and on social media you've heard me hammer like mastermind groups and like so it's kind of ironic that i'm in this you know you know quote unquote mastermind group because i am so anti all that shit so much and i and i was actually thinking about after this weekend because of how much i enjoyed this like you know do i need to rethink the way I talk about these mastermind groups because I've found so much tremendous value in this. And I think the biggest thing that that I see that's different from this group that I got to be a part of versus what I see on the internet and all over social media is that they made a, uh, like you have to make a certain amount of money to get into this group. 
And what I see online a lot is, you know, these people that are preying on anybody that's willing to pay for access. And so, and in my opinion, like a true mastermind is a group of individuals that are, that are, like it says, masterminds that, and they get together and they collaborate and they're all brilliant and successful and they leverage each other's knowledge and experience uh, and strengths and weaknesses. Uh, but what we what the the internet's done is bastardized those groups. It's now turned into like uh, I am the one that has this information. All I do is I regurgitate stuff that's like on self help books. Yeah. I'll allow anybody who's willing to pay mm -hmm. me into this group. And so now it's a group of not necessarily mastermind. It's just a group of people that are willing to pay to have access to this room. And so you're sitting around a room, and maybe you get lucky. So maybe you're listening to this right now, and you've been a part of a mastermind group, and you're like, oh, I had a great experience. Then I paid for this. And it's like, well, maybe you got lucky, and there was a couple other people that were really intelligent or brilliant or successful in there, but not most of them. But this group is like that because everybody is at like this crazy In level. all different industries. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, dude. I, I mean, you had, um, you, had, you had apparel people in there. You had photography in there. You have venture capitalist guys. You have a uh, peptide market. You have... Um, uh, you have corporate, uh, corporate events you have, I mean, you had all these like really different and we're, I mean, if you see that there's a picture of us, I mean, uh, just look like a bunch of dorks, including my, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. We just look like a bunch of dorks, you know, just all of us and just I mean, no, but what I loved about this group is that, you know, I, there's some things that you find in common when you, when I guess you get to that level, uh, one uh, as as ex as extremely successful and type A and confident they are, they also have this incredible balance of humility and 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 empathy and and they're, and they're just they're so humble and you would never know like that you know looking at a group there's like three hundred million dollars a year in revenue like sitting right there and you just you would you would walk right past them and not think anything of it. And the conversation was just so incredibly stimulating the entire way. I was exhausted. Every day we stayed up till midnight or one in the morning, was back up by 7, 7.30. And it was just seven people of this crazy. I talked to you the last day of it and you were so stimulated. Yeah. Like I, you were just going off. And, you know, I, I love that feeling, you know, when you're around really, really stimulating people. Yeah, I, I can tell. I can't remember yeah. the last, like. I know, like when I talk to other people about my my so relationship. When I talk to you guys, it's well, like my no, brain turns off. <laughs> I was gonna, I was, what I was gonna say is when I talk to people about our relationship, right? All of us and oh, like why, yeah. why it's worked and the growth over years. I said, you know, I attribute a lot of that to that, right? You guys were all, um, and there, then there's definitely some attributes that we all share with this group. Is that, and and one of the most common ones I'd say is that uh, that th there's this common theme of like ultra confidence with humility and the, just the pursuit of growth and learning. Yeah. Like that is like yeah. the core and they could, everybody could have different political, religious mm -hmm. background, like all these other things that, that growth minded. It, yeah. Just, yeah. Yes. Unbelievably growth minded, open-minded and just so fun to have conversation. Probably one of the coolest exercises that, that we, we did like un, it was an intentional exercise, but on the last day, uh, there was so much good conversation going that one of the things we had talked about before we got together is like, hey, for shits and giggles, we should build a business together. We should just use all of our our strengths and like let's let's see how fast we could throw together a business that requires as little of our time and effort. And to be in the living room and watch that exercise unfold with the different strategic minds. Because I mean, you guys, you told me about this. Like you guys got detailed. Yeah, it yeah. wasn't like I got an idea. Oh, cool! I'll do that, and I'll do that. It was like, oh yeah, this how do we fix this problem? What about that and, problem? What yeah. about yeah? Oh yeah, I mean, Marketing you have you, you. It's like you you have like the guy who does like corporate events, and so he's like un Blake. You have he's like unbelievably organized. Then you have oh, we have a chef, right? So we had this master chef, Michelin star type chef who built this app, who's super organized. And so you have the two of them that are like, okay, well, hold on, bro, give me the line items. We need this, 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 and this. Mm -hmm. Okay, what else? What else? Pro prodding the rest of us of like, what else do we need to get this like right now done tomorrow? And like, okay. I've got it. Revisit it. Okay. Who then tasking it out to each person. Then it's like, what else do you need to support that? Okay. And then you have the guy who's, right. who's a VC, who you knows markets. It's like, okay, well, what's the opportunity in that market? Okay. Hmm. Oh, it's $4 billion. Okay. What are, who are the top 10 leading companies? Oh, they're, uh, they make up this much of the pie. Okay. Right. This is like just being able to distill it down to where the, how much opportunity is there? How much potential could we even possibly make? How fast can we get it up and going? How cheap can we get it up and going? Then how can we delegate it out to make sure? And it was just in, a, in an hour's time. So, and then also processing all the other ideas, right? So you've got 
everybody's spitballing these ideas and within, you know, minutes you, you could decide whether that was a valid idea for what we're trying to accomplish or not, and then move on to the next one and then be like, okay, that's the one. And I mean, this morning I got an email of all the, the task of who's doing what. And like, it was just like that, like that. So great. Yeah, yeah, So, (laughs) you know, you just made me think of, you said something that reminded me of something else you said a long time ago uh, about when you were growing up, you just said that these people all have this combination of things. Like everybody's very successful, very wealthy, right? You said like, you know, millions and millions of dollars, lots of success, but also lots of humility and growth minded. I remember you saying this when you were a kid, that when you were a kid, that you were raised to think that wealthy people were evil yes. or bad or whatever. Yes. And then when you started to have friends whose parents did very well, you learned like that's that's not the case at all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it flipped everything for you. And one it just made me think of one of the because Jessica has had this experience as well. She's yeah. grew up, she grew up kind of similar to you. Yes. And one of the biggest lies that's been sold to people in most market economies, free, you know, free societies, which most Western countries fall under that, it, unless you inherit a ton of money, okay, the vast majority of millionaires are self-made, eighty over 85%, that's real data. When you meet people that are very successful, they're not what the media depicts. They're typically not evil, scheming, you know, get, you know, step on the little guy. They're typically really growth-minded people that work really hard. And I, you know, and it's, so it's like this huge lie that we tell people. And I think it's to keep people from trying to grow or pursue. It's really weird. I I also think there's something else that perpetuates that. At least this has been my experience is there's levels to this. And the level before this level is the people that have, have made good success. You make good money. You're deep into the six figures. Yeah. You're you're taking care of you and your family, but you're not like uber rich. Like most of these guys are uber like rich. Yeah. Like so and at that level, a lot of people still, including myself, because I remember being at this level, right? Into the six figures, making really good money for myself, but still driven by a lot of my insecurities sure. around money. And what comes with a lot of those insecurities, there's like these dickish personalities, this buying things for other people, not for yourself, trying to front, trying to act like you're at the next level when you're really not. And so I could see how someone like Jessica or me could have been raised that way and then have like a confirmation bias because yeah. we've been told by our parents, oh yeah, the, the rich are assholes. They don't care about anybody. They're this, yeah. they're that. And then you meet these people who perce- or you perceive to be rich because they drive their Mercedes. they got the nice clothes on. They talk about everything they do. And it's like, and, and there's a lot of that in the middle. There's a lot of that when they're when you're coming up of this pretending that you're, you've really made it when you really haven't. And then there's a difference of, oh, I fucking... Past making it a long time ago, well, and I got, I don't have to talk about I just, it. I just remember this as a trainer. At at one point, my my clientele got very high end, right? Because you, you build a reputation as a trainer, you get higher end clients. Awesome, and I would meet these people, and they were all very hardworking. Many of them very very educated. Some of them self made uh, as entrepreneurs, and it wasn't they weren't just good at what they did. They were also like classically trained pianists on the side mm-hmm. or. They have hobbies like mountain climbing and like, you know, like they're just growth minded. They're, they're reading books constantly. And it's like, you see more of that yeah. at the higher levels than you do at the, the lower pilot's levels. It's license. And that's going to sound did. shitty. People are going to hear this and be like, oh, no, no, no. It's true. Like there's less to when you're growth minded and you pursue those things, you're more likely to be successful, but we're constantly sold. And remember, I came from poor immigrants. So, you know, part of me is that suspicious growing up too of that. But then you get to certain levels and you meet these people like, well, you know what? A lot of them are just growth minded. This is why they continue to succeed. And they, yeah. a lot of them didn't start off that way. They built themselves up. It's a shitty lie that we sell to kids. That we, we tell them that, you know, that making money is evil. That's not evil. Worshiping money is evil. That's totally, mm-hmm. different. It totally was a, different. We found out that everybody in the group, which this was kind of really rare, that everybody has a, a trauma story. Like we all have like crazy oh. fucked up backgrounds. Oh, wow. Yeah. So everybody had come from that. You know, the other thing that's interesting about- like, like watching these guys and, and well, it doesn't break you. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and watching I, Jasmine was the only girl and the rest of us were guys, but watching the way that they process information or they take like when someone, like, I, I think I shared this with you when we were on the phone, when I was all excited about like, just how, how brilliant this group was. I said, uh, you know, JT, he's in the medical space, which is like, you know, nurses and, and uh, medical devices. And he's into, he's like in, in, into that. Right. And, 
he found out like midway through like the our story at Mind Pump, and he was just so fascinated with the the media company and what, what we've been able to do off of it and everything like that. He's like, oh my God. He's like, can I call you? And so one day he calls me and I probably spend an hour, oh, yeah, maybe an hour and a half. We talk on the phone. I just, I'm just telling him everything I've learned up to this point, like all the things I did wrong, the things that we've done right. And like, you know, like the, the, the things that we've pieced together to have grown uh, the social presence, YouTube, Instagram, things like that podcast. And uh, he just, you know, he's before he hangs on the phone, he's like, man, I appreciate it. this has been so, I, I, you know, I owe you so much for this. And I was like, oh, you know, don't worry about so that. Hour call. Yeah. Hour, hour and a half call hangs up. Okay. That was uh, not even six months ago. Okay. That dude's Instagram is about to pass mine. <laughs> and gave the formula, bro. Just well, just they it. know how to. They'll take yeah, the information. No, yeah, what I was telling they... Sal that was so. That's like it's 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 awesome to see, and also frustrating because like it's not like I haven't shared any of that information with my own YouTube team, right? Like I've talked to them about all the same things, like of like figuring it out using what we have as a litmus test, going back, and, you know, going back, t tweaking a little bit more, then doing it again, then, and then. He just took all of it and like systemized it. He he hired somebody who was a friend of his who's already got a video editing thing. Crazy. They meet once a month for three or four hours. They batch like 60 pieces of content that it drips all month long. They go back, they evaluate everything, every comment, every like, every share, everything like that. They look, they compare all the things that they just, they just did from the previous one. They go, okay, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. Okay, that worked the best. That worked the next best. Okay, now how can we tweak this, tweak that? Okay, boom, another 60. And they just kept doing that for six months. And then before you knew it, he started to hit. And then now, now everything's just hitting. And he's, now he's a, he's a very, you were telling me about this guy. He's, he's like, 27 years old, dude. Yeah. He's rare. Yeah. Wow. Super talent. Super yeah. talent. Yeah. Like, it's, like he could see things or just. Important. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's like turbocharged him. Yeah. Yeah. It was, you know, it was, it was, it's so cool to see though, to see that, uh, you know, when you do that, I mean, and I don't know if you guys are watching, I'll share when we get off air because these, this has just happened this weekend and now all of them are posting now. I knew they, I, I knew I kind of got to them a little bit. I didn't know how much, um, when I worked them out because they all wanted like this workout. It's like, you know, Oh, I saw that. I saw you kind of taking them through a little bit of yeah. mobility. And yeah, stuff. I literally taught three moves. Okay. Yeah. I taught uh, three moves. I actually taught a, uh, I taught combat stretch, yeah. a windmill yeah. and I got everybody to squat. And they all wanted like they they were like they had this was planned on the schedule. Would they think you were gonna take them through? Oh like, yeah, the circuit. Yeah, they thought or oh, Arnold camp. get a get a hard pump and like you know what are we gonna work out today? And they're all like jazzed to get in there and and, and I'm like what the fuck am I gonna do? And then let me look, mind <laughs> you, this group is so different. I, I got tall, I got I've short, I got like athletic, I got not athletic. Yeah. I mean, I'm like this is like the epitome of a group class, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck am I gonna do with them? So I had to tell them. I say, hey, here's the deal, like. I know you guys were real excited about a workout today and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to work you out somehow, but I would never do this. I would never take people like you all in a group and then just take us through some random ass workout, not knowing everybody's this and that. And I said, and so I was really torn. I didn't have a plan. I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do right now? I said, you know, let, let's start with a windmill. Right. And so I like that. Let's just warm them up and I'll do some stuff. And then, and then I just turned into this like hour lesson of these, these three, these, these three movements and afterwards. And, you know, I could tell that you, you could hear, you could just see them all processing the information I'm giving. And they were all like super grateful afterwards. I wasn't sure, you know, cause we're still all getting to know each other, like how they took it. Now I see, cause they're all posting about it. And they're just like, it was like a, a light bulb moment for all of them. It's like this, there's some things that one of the things I know that, you know, when we talk about, you know, going in and exercise, instead of thinking of it like exercise, is think of it as practice mm -hmm. and a move. And I was, and they're always like, so should I do 10 reps of this or should I do this? I said, does it matter? If you did one rep that's extremely, that, that is quality, it'll be better than three sets of 10. So don't get hung up on that perfect this movement that I'm trying to teach you and figure that out first. That's your foundation. So instead of just piling on more exercises, more sets, and more so reps. For the, and so they expected, let me guess, they expected to beat the, have the crap beat out of them, but instead afterwards they were energized and they felt good. Yeah. Yeah. See? Yeah. And, and like, so just, what an opportunity for trainers and coaches listening right now. This is what people expect when you show them something like Adam did, because you didn't, I don't know if you want to share this, but they all told Adam afterwards. No, I do want to pay thousands of dollars for that. I do want to share this to the coaches. Cause here's the thing too, like this, and th this is the the power of paying for or getting access to a group like this and then being able to offer your services for free. Now, obviously I had no desired outcome to train clients. I don't want to train no more clients, but had I been still trying to build my training business and I got a hold of these, these people, 
offering them a free hour like this would have been so incredibly valuable because what happened mm -hmm. and by the way they all came in thinking they're gonna get a workout more. right yeah, I, mean, I didn't give yeah, exactly yeah. i blew their mind with three movements that mm -hmm. didn't even get them to sweat didn't even get this but shattered their paradigm of how they had been and they all kind of work out already but you could tell like all of them like oh my god everything mm -hmm. i've been doing mm -hmm. is wrong and mm -hmm. of course without me saying that right just me giving value and teaching and showing and then afterwards we went for a walk and all of them are trying to convince me how on the side of this business, I could be charging a thousand to five thousand dollars an hour for these these services to teach what I had just taught and whatever else they're like, whatever else you have behind that. And I'm like, I don't it's not yeah, about it's not the money thing for me. I don't yeah. I said I don't want to I don't want to train people anymore as much as I love you guys and everything. But what it highlights is your point, Sal, is like, man, if you're a trainer and you're a coach right now. Like, do not, one, be afraid to offer your services for free like that. And then also, do not allow other people to dictate what you know is best. That's right. Like, I, you know, like I, and I was close, not gonna lie. I was like, oh, should I just throw them like four or five exercises? We'll just get everybody sweating. I'm like, God damn, no way. I'm not gonna do that to these people, right? And I, and they have to know that, like, I would never do that. So I was like, you know what? Let's just, and then once we started moving, it opened the door for me to, like, explain why this guy couldn't do a full lizard with rotation and why she could get down this way and why her right foot was externally rotating on this person, why this person's heel was raising up over just here. Just building value. Oh, building value. yeah. Just teaching all of them on every little thing and explaining why it's so important that we address all these things. And that's literally when you're a coach and a trainer and you're helping someone for free, that's how you're planting that seed mm -hmm. for why they're going to train with you for the next three to six months. You could be teaching them these things while you're teaching them, you're breaking down all these things that you see in their And the way patterns. they feel after, you know, I used to love getting clients that after the workout, they'd look at me and be like, you know what? I feel really good. Yeah. And they were surprised. Yeah. By the way they said it, I could tell that they were like, how did you expect to feel? Well, I expected to crawl out of the gym. Like, you're not supposed to feel like that at the end of a workout. You're supposed to feel really good. Oh, yeah. I'll be coming back. You know, you blow their mind. Yeah, That's yeah. crazy. How is everybody's uh, journey with with the red light, Juve? Everybody's been using it pretty regularly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, now we have, I have an extra one in my house now, so I'm back to it. Are you still yeah. doing the, the, yeah. the Juve sex? <laughs> <laughs> the red light sex? Not since I talked about it, actually, but we, we, <laughs> I, do, I do have it up in my bathroom right now, which is nice. So what I need to do is I got to find out if, because uh, I asked you guys last time, if how much the glass dilutes the- oh, yeah. uh, You got to ask the guys. Mm, yeah, so I got to find mm. that out because that's how I've been using it. I, I I'm, so I'm at like three days a week. What are you guys, yeah. how are you guys doing? Same or? Yeah. I'm daily. You're every day? Yeah, okay. because of that. Wow. Three, four days. Yeah, I. what's cool about it is just like how the kids have been noticing um, and keep asking me questions about it. It's funny to, to try and answer- you know, like the benefits of it, uh, with, you know, without it sounding like, you know, magic. <laughs> That's so crazy. Yeah. They're like, well, how does light, uh, help affect, you know, you in a healthy way and like trying to explain what it does to the cells and, you know, and the mitochondria and like trying to, you know, describe to them the benefits. It's, it's challenging, but it's also like, it's cool because they're they're getting you know exposure to the, to the fact that this is like something that's valid that uh, well, I mean I didn't even know. Well, remember we had Doctor Khan on the show and he kept talking about um, foundational principles of health. Uh -huh. So like you know you'll have certain dysfunctions. He goes, but if you can improve the foundational principles, then everything gets better. For example, if you're just an easy one, right? If you're not moving, if you're just on a couch all day long and you have, uh, you know, high blood pressure, higher risk of cancer, inflammation, you get headaches, you're not sleeping well. One foundational principle is let's just exercise properly and move and that'll improve everything. So mm -hmm. that's what that basically means, right? Yeah. So with red light therapy, because that particular wavelength of light positively affects the mitochondria and any cell that it shines on. So no matter what yeah. cell that it shines on, any hair, it gets, yeah. it gets the mitochondria to operate more effectively and efficiently. Okay. It gets it to, to operate better. So if it's a skin cell, you get faster regeneration. If it's a testosterone producing cell, you produce more testosterone. If it's a hair follicle cell, you'll grow more hair. Right. So that's basically how it works. By the way, speaking of testosterone, I got a study I got to tell you guys about. This is pretty cool. I love studies on hormones and behaviors. I think it's so much more interesting than hormones and things like fat loss or, or muscle building or whatever. Yeah. So trip off this, right? So I'll, I'll read the, I'll read the, the highlights. So the study is titled, uh, testosterone promotes persistence against a stronger opponent. Okay. So they investigated the effects of exogenous testosterone on competition persistence before the competition. They manipulated individuals perceived control. Testosterone doubled competition persistence in those with low perceived control. 
In other words, testosterone enhanced sensitivity to the opponent's uh, growing advantage. So in other words, testosterone made people more resistant to losing, made them want to compete harder, made them want to push harder. Mm, uh, more of that. Yes. Uh, yes. Men with low perceived control quitted twice as early as those with high perceived control, but then they gave them the testosterone and it countered the effect. So just one more thing, Justin, to add to the conspiracy theory of why they're trying to lower everyone's testosterone. <laughs> <laughs> It's hey, out there, man. You know, uh, speaking of study, I was I didn't even plan on bringing this up, but you just reminded me of this. Uh, you know the study that we talk about, um, the the marshmallow one, the delayed gratification yeah. one? Have, have you heard someone tell you that that's been debunked? I did. I've heard someone say that, but okay. I don't know too many details. Okay, so I, someone in my group said that this weekend because I brought up the delayed gratification yeah, thing. Because the, the study originally was like, this can predict like success. Yeah, it's, they said it was one of the greatest predictors oh, of a kid's, kids future success. Yeah. Yeah was if they had the ability to delay gratification and they tested them with the marshmallows, have one now or two later type of deal. And the kids that said two later or there. How long did they follow them? After well, that? so listen, yeah. so here's, here's the debunking that I heard from it. And what was interesting was that I was like, well, I could totally relate to that. So uh, what it said was it was more, there was more correlation to the, how those kids were raised, whether they were raised with privilege or not, mm -hmm. because the kids that grew up that were underprivileged, they wanted the the, the right marshmallow Otherwise right away because it was scarce. Because it was scarce, and so they were so quick to grab mm. it. Were kids that had abundance and had a lot of money, and was that they had more patience, they could wait. They could wait. Oh. And I was like, oh shit, that's kind of crazy. Because yeah, they need to control for that. That's my that's my issues, sugar addiction yeah. comes from that. And I've told you guys before on the podcast. Like, I, it took me a long yeah. time to realize why do I have Get this well, weird behavior of when something sweet is in the house, I've got to fucking eat the whole box. Like, I don't do that with <laughs> anything otherwise else. Your siblings would eat it, right? But yeah. I mean, for 17 years of my <laughs> life, I trained myself to you better get it because you ain't getting seconds you know and so you take a kid like that versus a kid who is either an only child or has abundance and doesn't work like that like i, mm, I saw a study that with, makes a lot of sense. i saw a study on with kids where they told they put uh treats in front of the kids and they said okay i'll be back in 30 minutes don't eat any or whatever and then they leave mm -hmm. and they see which kids will sneak one or whatever and then they did it where they said in that chair is an empty chair in the corner in that empty chair over there there's a fairy that's watching you to make sure that you don't take any candy. I'll be right back. And then that worked. If the kid, if they told the kid that there was like a magical something sitting <laughs> yeah. in the corner, they would like sit there like, oh shit. Yeah. They're going to so, know I ate the candy. I did this with my son. And like, I, I, do that with my kid? I did this with my son and I almost cried, dude. It like literally got me so emotional. So I, 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 I just had this for the weekend. This is literally last night I did this with him. And so I'm like, oh, I haven't asked him. But maybe he's, is he old enough yet to me have this conversation? Like to delay, grab, try and test him. Yeah. And so I said, I said, Hey, daddy wants to, have, I have a question to ask you. You have an option. You have, you have, uh, you can get two cupcakes or one cupcake. Uh, daddy will give you one cupcake right now. Or if you wait till tomorrow, you can have two cupcakes. What do you want to do? And he sat there and he like pondered it for a minute. And he goes, two cupcakes, daddy. And I go, why? And he goes, so I could share one with you. Oh, come on. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh God. I was like, oh, my God. Everyone's going to cry right oh, now. Oh, dude, I just told it again. It got me because it was, got me in the feel so bad. I was like, oh, first, you know. He's a closer like his dad. Yeah, That's what happened. It's it <laughs> inside what part of his like, yeah. part of his like, yeah, oh, dude, he's going to be. He's, gonna he's, be all, he's all, if I tell yeah. him that, he'll give me three. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, man. Not That's only, cute, man. I know. Not only did he pick God. two, but then when I asked him why, so he could share the other one with me. And I was like, oh, bro, come on. You would wait and then you would give up the other one oh. i'm like come on that's so cool so oh, that's like so yeah, awesome. instantly i got all yeah got my, all my three-year-old keeps telling everybody tells a nanny tells his mom i i'm gonna be at whatever it is just like papa and it's always something really good i'm gonna be strong just like papa. i'm gonna be really smart just, i can't wait to grow up and be just like Papa, and uh, like, oh, they tell me about this. All, you know, it's, that's so oh, great. it's so nice to hear oh, that. That's the best. You know, that's the best. That's cute, man. That he said that. Oh, I know. I was like, so I, I didn't even know if I could have that yet with him. Like, is he at a point where he can he even? You did yeah. not expect that. I did not. I definitely did not. And I was like, the, first, and the of course, the first part of me is like, oh yeah. He said did you two. give him two on the spot? No, I didn't you win, have, buddy. Oh, you know, the best. <laughs> this is what I also. What I, my son's so amazing, right? Like he, I didn't even have that to give to him. He didn't, <laughs> he didn't even bug me and ask me. Did you go buy him? No. We didn't even talk about it. It was like literally just a moment. We we're in the bathtub oh, yeah. and we're talking and I brought it up and then he said that, oh, got all man. emotional. Oh, I love you, buddy. You're so amazing. This and that. Then we went right back to playing. He didn't even think that. I mean, this also too, that's I think another thing that it highlights and I, I my my friends that are having kids now that are coming up or like, uh, or are going to, 
the sugar thing was such the move, yeah. I feel like, because that's the relationship. He didn't even bug me about it. He didn't even ask me afterwards, like, Daddy, where's the cupcake? Or am I going to get like, he just, it wasn't a big, it's not a big deal, you know, which highlights too why he was like no big deal about waiting another day for two so oh, he could have an extra so one to give away. Like, I was just like, oh my God. That's so dude, awesome. Such a good kid. Hey, speaking of eating, uh, did I tell you guys the percentage of people or, or who consumes the most beef? Did I tell you guys this? Uh-huh. Like what? What type of people? Or? So, so <laughs> I just read yeah, this. Like what region I just of the read world? This, no, no, I just read this study. I thought it was really awesome. Because I know that we all in this room make up this percentage. The majority. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 50% of the beef consumption in America. So half of the beef that is eaten and consumed in America is consumed by 12% of Americans. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Say that again. Say that again. Half of, so 50% of all beef consumption. Okay. Is eaten by only twelve percent of Americans. So twelve percent of Americans are eating half the beef. Okay, you know, well, you know what that says to me wow. even more. We got how it. how under protein everybody is yeah, too. Yeah. Imagine if only twelve percent of the people are eating a majority of the meat, and even the people that I've I've had that I've trained that eat meat still under consumed protein. What do you think is happening to that? Uh, yeah, eighty two. Well, so uh, you see this the proper way. Now the study. Yeah. What do you think they twi- How do you think they they spun this? What do you guys think they said? Oh, that we're the ones doing the damage to the oh, planet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Many yeah. Americans. Only, only 12% hey, hey, of us are fucking up the Climate world. offenders. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, hey, listen, listen. This is, by the way, this is a new uh, term. We're going to oh, hear more and more. I have a stat for you. We're going to hear more and more of, especially during election season. Ready? Here's the quote. Yeah. Many, many Americans are eating nearly eight times more beef in a day than what's recommended. Ready for this? This is the new term. For an earth-friendly diet. <laughs> earth friendly diet. earth friendly yeah i just read an article That's, by the way how about this stat though uh i heard that nine percent so vegans fart nine percent uh more often than beef eaters throughout the day <laughs> <laughs> wait nine times more soy nine times more, more. Soy nine, times nine times more so who's really contributing more to, yeah, the, come on, to the climate the, problem <laughs> all the all the I'm gassy vegans, vegans come on man yeah, what's uh, wrong with you guys? That's yeah. This fact could, check me, Doug. Earth friendly <laughs> diet is going to be a thing. Okay, they're going to start saying that. Earth friendly. Are you eating an Earth? Friendly so diet? three people from my group were ex vegans. Ex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let me F- guess. They felt like crap, and they had to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is exactly what happened. And so, th- so they and they converted to a, pe- a pescatarian. A, is it a pescatarian or pescatarian? Pescatarian. pescatarian. Not a pescatarian. No. Just pescatarian. No. No. So pescatarian. That's just when you're referring to a pescatarian. Yes. Okay. So, Justin, you're wrong, but not that far off. Oh, so men who follow a mostly vegan diet fart seven times more than those who fo- follow seven. a predominantly meat-based diet. Interesting. Ah, see, 2%. Well, have you still. guys ever eaten? Still. Have you guys ever tried to eat a Soy vegan day? stuff like that will do Well, no, it. have you ever had a vegan day? I've done it a few times. Where, where all all I, those carbs, Actually, I should do this yeah. once a month. Where I would have just a vegan day, go low protein for other reasons, and uh, yeah, dude, you just 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 an air machine. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, just a, all the all just the, the a, all the fermentable fibers and stuff, you know. Uh, yeah, that's funny. so you just yeah, that's <laughs> like a, like an old motor, just, you're just blowing to turn out the over. ozone layer. What the hell, yeah. you seriously? That's you know, funny. stop and, it. You know. Yeah. Anyway, this will be this will be the, save the planet. This is going to be a thing um, where they're going to start talking about this. But you know, I've said this before, and people in the health and fitness space understand this. The average American eats a terrible diet. Most of their diet majority is made up of heavily processed foods. But the only whole natural foods that most people still eat are meat, milk, and eggs. And if you cut those out, you are going to cause far worse health in in many, many people, which is worse for the earth. The best thing we can do for the earth is have healthy, strong, productive uh, people in good mood, who have good moods and aren't depressed and not anxious. So this whole, like, let's sacrifice our health for the earth. We're going to end up with a bunch of sick, unhealthy, unproductive uh, humans. Yeah. That's not good for anybody. No, not good you for me. Yeah. yeah. Speaking of, uh, so we're, we're talking a little bit about eating uh, uh, nuts, walnuts, you know, legumes, whatever, yeah. right? So there's this guy in China who was um, eating walnuts, and, and he was cracking walnuts with his something that he found that he was just cracking the walnuts with. It was working out great for him. Like a tool. Later on, like, like a tool. It seemed like a tool. They, they they look at it, um, he brought it in somewhere. I think somebody saw it and was like, oh, my God. Turns out it was a uh, grenade, <laughs> a live grenade from, like, World War II, like oh a German God. grenade. And he's just slamming it against these oh my walnuts God. to open them and, like, what had the- no idea. Like, what? somebody had to tell him, like, hey, that's like a grenade. Wow. Yeah. Uh, can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. It's wow. just a matter of time. Maybe, yeah. like, that one strike, boom. 
Oh, no. stupid. Yeah. What would even make you lead you to do that? Use that of you all just, the things. Heavy. I, I just saw it. Yeah, it's a heavy object. You ever held and it he was like, yeah, it's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. long no, and cylinder. Super dense. I know that. Oh, like, oh, <laughs> oh, that, oh that's yeah. a German grenade. Yeah, German grenade. I mean, you, a lot of people, it looks like you could. Kind of looks like a pestle or, or whatever you call it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay, I get it now. Because I'm like, I'm thinking of like a traditional looking grenade. I'm like, How did they set those off? There was no pin, right? Did you twist it? How did that work? Oh, yeah. It looks like that, right? Like you twist and then just launch it, I guess. Right? I don't know. Good question. That is yeah, interesting. But, uh, it's yeah. actually a Chinese grenade, not oh, German. It's not German? Yeah. Yeah. This is so random. God, I'm so wrong stuff. with my facts. Yeah, it just reminded me of a meme. It had a picture of an AK-47. Yeah. And it said, uh, the only good thing socialism ever created and uh, leftists hate it. Because <laughs> the AK-47 was made by the Soviets. It's like the most widely used gun in the world. Yeah, it's always the example, right? Yeah. Like, we gotta get rid of these. Yeah. Did you did you guys see the uh the it's I going viral on TikTok right now? The the Costco woman with the, the couch? No. Oh, pull it up, Doug. Pull up uh woman returns Costco couch two years later. Two years later? So okay, so I have to I have to admit something that I'm a bit embarrassed to admit that I didn't know this. Okay, in, in high school. Okay, so, and I don't know how much the policy has changed. I, I think it still is kind of like that, but Costco has a very similar like Nordstrom vibe where it's like if you've had something for a really long time, you could still bring it. So I had a I had a girlfriend in high school who every, like she had a bunch of stuff like her stereo. I know she did it with like her bed stuff. She had like a couple like things that she would, she would buy from Costco. And then a year later, return it and get the newest model and she just did that every single year because wow. costco has this return policy wow and yeah and this is look at so the woman go is going by after returning her couch of two years after buying oh it. she said she's like the color anymore yeah after two years <laughs> and that's and, absurd dude. so they do like, they did what they did with cameras they did with like a lot of, and she used to do that with like like nikon and canon like nice yeah. like how much do you think that eats into their profit like if I, you take account these kind because of, there's people like there's got to be like a decent amount of people that'll do that that's yeah just Manage. Yeah, mm. yeah. It, I mean, I'm sure it, it happens all the time. I, I don't. Do you know if they've changed the policy or anything like that? I don't know. Uh, Did you know that you do that? Uh, well, <laughs> so Rachel, my girlfriend. Oh, she uh, does it too. Huh? Well, so she had this Dyson box, and apparently there's some re return policy. And I go, why are you keeping that Dyson box? Well, in case I want to return it. I go, how long have you had this thing? I've had it for like a year. I go, are you kidding me? <laughs> You're going to return a Dyson after using it for a year? Do you understand that you're making everybody's Dyson more expensive? <laughs> I said, ah, you're the problem. So this was, so the girl that I'm talking about, she came from, a, her dad was a lawyer. So she was like the richest girl out of all of our friends. That's why I thought it was really crazy that she did it. Cause I was the same way. I was just like, wait, wait, she had her box. This is the first time I found out she had a, a box for like her stereo boom boxing that she had kept. And I'm like, why do you still have that box? Throw it away. She's like, oh no, I might return this uh, next year. And I'm like, we return it next year. What do you mean? She's like, oh yeah, Costco lets you. I'm the worst for returns. That's I'm crazy. the kind of guy oh, that I, I like. I don't like do this it. anymore. Yeah. I don't want to return it. Whatever. I took. I took. Yeah, I go get somebody to it. just take it. You know, like, if it's here, anywhere I'll close to it. a tank of gas in price, it's like, uh, I'm like yeah. that's how I, yeah. I try to justify like not going back. Dude, you know, I, so. I'm terrible with that. No, I'm not good. Isn't that crazy though? That's crazy. It is crazy. I mean, allow that. I was actually pissed off. Because uh, yeah. I heard it, how common it was, and I, I just thought, you know, as a business owner, yeah. Yeah. having people take advantage of you like that yeah. is, is not cool. It's no. dishonest. Yeah, and it's you're totally right. dishonest. It'll, the the yeah. price put it out there. For no, everybody you're right. They have to. They have to. Yeah, they got to. They got to. Every like, every company makes it has factor to factor in. in shrink. Right. Yeah. That's what yep. that is. Right. Yep. So you have to factor shrink in, and so it is a little bit more. It's really theft. When you get right down to it, it's just theft. Every Doug takes the. He gets so mad. You ever see how mad he gets? We've had a not a lot. Very rare. We've had people who because our programs come with a thirty day money back. Yeah, Doug does bother him. Oh yeah, someone will do it like three or four times and you could tell what they're doing there's yeah. some people that Doug gets advantage. heated yeah, he yeah. wants to fight people yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it yeah, well yeah. you know I have a very strong sense of justice what can I say yeah. <laughs> yeah. or integrity integrity right you have a lot of I'm integrity you, and so that's one of those things where it's like I mean it just doesn't make the world any better when people do dishonest things I mean yeah, it really right. bothers me it, it really bothers me when it's somebody you know? who's got money too that's no that what, really bothers yeah, me I mean if you're like you know destitute yeah okay yeah because I feel like it's like okay well you're not exactly stealing so it's like one step but they made a virtuous post on Instagram, so it, it covers. It. Yeah. <laughs> you know, hey Andrew, did you find the actual TikTok video that went viral? Because I was looking for that. I want to see that. I did, but it's it's kind of a long video. This girl goes uh, over her entire story of, from oh. beginning to end. But I looked at Costco's return policy, and they have a risk-free, hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. 
with basically everything except cigarettes and alcohol. They don't accept returns. And most electronics like t- televisions, smartphone device, MP3 players are 90 well, days. Co- don't get, I'm hoping we're not giving people ideas. Well, listen, Costco's, Costco's uh, they're a model of, uh, they're very successful and they provide high quality stuff and they've got high service. So they must have enough customers who are like Doug and, uh, you know, who are like, okay, I like this company. In order to make up the difference, right? I mean, I love their, I love their, um, their hot dog philosophy. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, that is brilliant. It's so smart yeah. because so many people go there for the cheap hot dog, and they lose on the hot dogs. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of like a dollar fifty. I forget how cheap. Basically, marketing at this yeah. point, right? It I is. Mean, it's so can... it's so brilliant to make the the hot dog and the pizza so cheap that everybody goes there, and there's a good chance that you're going to need to pick something up from yeah. Costco. It's a, a brilliant story. It's the same thing that yep. I remember Safeway hacked into with the the whole chickens, mm-hmm. right? They, t- they take a hit on the whole chicken. That's a that's a massive marketing strategy that everybody has tried to adopt after the fact. It's driven so much business their way. So yeah, smart. Interesting. Yep. Oh, shout out. Yeah. Uh, Justin reminded me, he was talking about music and random artists. So this is a different type of a shout out for the audience. But I've, I've literally, I think like for the last, five or six months like his music is all i've been listening to uh steven rodriguez cool artist really really cool artist so if you have similar music taste as i do if you don't then whatever uh but you'll like it i think i, I i've really enjoyed his stuff so check out his stuff on on spotify or wherever music is streaming element t is an electrolyte powder with no artificial sweeteners and no sugar that can do a lot of things it can help prevent headaches muscle cramps fatigue sleeplessness, uh, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiency. This is the best electrolyte powder you'll find on the market. It has the right amount of sodium for people who work out and don't eat a heavily processed food diet. It's great stuff. Go check them out. Get yourself a free sample pack. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get a free sample pack with any order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Anthony from Idaho. Anthony, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Anthony, did I not tell you Green Bay beat us already? (laughs) <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, I saw that. It's that a true was brutal. Fan right here. Yeah, you yeah. are a true fan. That's yeah. it. That's, that's, yeah, that's a lot so, of guts. So you know, true the, fan. To, to rock that right now. Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, first off, just uh, this is pretty surreal for me. This is pretty crazy. Been listening to you guys for the last couple of years, and uh, so I don't ramble here. I will just stick to my email. So. Thank you guys for the podcast. You really pretty much saved my life. I had hit rock bottom in August of 21 with alcohol and my health. I had gotten up to about 430 pounds at the time and was sitting in a jail cell for about 90 days due to too many DUIs. When I found your podcast after getting out of jail because I wanted to start a new life, I haven't stopped listening to it since. I've gone back to all sorts of your to the old ones and been playing catch up with the new ones going back and forth. And that's been pretty fun to hear the, the podcast evolve in that way. Um, currently I am down to around 327 pounds and actually spent a good year after getting out of jail around 350 pounds following your programs and listening to your podcasts. And I have really noticed now when I've been trying to drop the weight, it's been a lot easier which has been really fantastic to go through just listening to you guys. I really want to push myself, my mind and my body and be the best version of myself by my 40th birthday. And what I want to do is I want to try and do one bodybuilding competition at the age of 40, just to see how far I can push myself and just to see if I can do it. And I was just wondering what advice would you guys have for me going forward? First of all, awesome uh, story to hear where you're yeah, at man. now, man. That's in that's you. What you've done? Oh wow! A, we just got a picture of this. Is you currently right now? Uh, yeah, the bottom one with the trying to flex. Yeah, yeah. we see that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how long? Wow, it's incredible. Wow. Dude. How, how long does it take? Uh, how long until you turn forty? It is a little less than two years. I'm thirty. I turned thirty eight in November. So okay, okay, okay. we can make move. And he's got a good base. Yeah, he's definitely got some muscle on him. Yeah, for sure. you know. Now let me ask you this: Is what is it about competition that you're drawn to, or doing the bodybuilding competition? What's the feeling or the drive, or what are you getting? What are you going to get out of it? Because that'll help me with my answer. Um. 
So I've been a competitive athlete my entire life. I spent most of my life playing baseball and basketball, played baseball in college. Um, and I just kind of coming out of the last three years of basically a whole new transformation. I really want to push myself, my mind and my body to the limits. And I want to see where it goes. I want to see what I can really do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not, now there, like there's a good and a bad side to this. Okay. The good side is if you take your time um, and do things the right way, then it'll work out well for you. The, the, the bad side is if you rush it and, or, and, or you fall in love with this, uh, this goal. Like this is everything. Once I hit that goal, man, I, life is going to be different. It's gonna be incredible. You could suffer from what they call uh, a rival. Uh, what is that? Post post arrival depression or where you get the goal and then afterwards you're like, Oh God, what do I do now? Can I, can I make a suggestion for a different kind of competition that I think may serve you a little bit better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about powerlifting? Yep. I was thinking the same thing. I actually kind of did think about that. The, it kind of was those two that I was kind of thinking about doing, yeah. honestly. So. I like powerlifting better. Yeah. Even uh, if it's beforehand. And I, mean. I also think that you could, Take that advice from Sal and still build a sick ass physique exactly. on the way. Yeah, dude, because powerlifting so has weight classes, physique. so you could get leaner and leaner and leaner and leaner, and still be very competitive in powerlifting. And you could do a powerlifting competition now. I mean, you could you could get ready for one now. And because it's performance oriented, um, the the potential damage that it could run on, let's say, your metabolism, your body, and your psyche is far lower. And I'm not saying powerlifting's perfect. But bodybuilding is one of those sports where, I mean, you get into it and if you're you, just, you're just more likely to have a better relationship with food going through powerlifting totally versus yes. bodybuilding. Yes. Bodybuilding is, it'll mess, it messes with a lot of people. It's really, say. really difficult to not put you in a, a bit of this body obsessiveness and this, uh, extreme, mean, -diet, extreme levels of dieting yeah. and cardio. And so you're just flirting with that. And because you're in this, you're in a beautiful place right now. I mean, yeah. I love hearing a story like yours where you've completely turned your life around. You're fucking heading down the right path right now. I love the idea of setting a crazy, badass goal, yep. getting after it. I don't like bodybuilding as the choice just for the reasons of I know what it can do to you mentally, going, getting so obsessed with the body. But I also respect that you want to push your body to a level like that. And I, we can do kind of both, meaning we could train for a powerlifting meet, but then I could also help you like, Hey, let's keep sculpting and, and getting mm -hmm. lean and getting ripped. And like, why not look badass while you do it too, but not so obsessed about the calories and the, and the, and the weight and the body fat percentage that you start doing things that are unhealthy just to get this yeah. body and fat the percentage. The will, will feed that competitive itch. And I know like, you know, as an ex athlete myself too, it's just, it's one of those things you want to be you want to drive towards something and it's like a very uh, rewarding experience when you see yourself progress and you're pushing your body in that direction. I think, you know, to, to pour yourself with a strength focused goal uh, is going to carry you so much further. And, and, you know, as you get into that and you really, you know, it becomes ingrained in you uh, and you're eating and you're feeding yourself appropriately and healthy. Uh, that's where we could start looking at, you know, maybe going into showing off your body and like what's happened as a result of what you've put in. Yeah. Look, here's the deal. You could get lean and do powerlifting, but the powerlifting is going to check whether or not you're over dieting, overdoing cardio, because you'll get weaker. You're just going to okay. get weaker with bodybuilding. People ignore that. They get so focused on the scale. And I got to change. I got to overtrain. I got to diet, whatever that they, it's like, they don't pay attention to their performance or their health or how they feel. Now, again, I'm not saying you can't go unhealthy in a powerlifting competition, but it's a far better choice for most people. And it's going to feel more like the, com the competitions you did when you were playing sports than bodybuilding, you know, bodybuilding, you get on stage and then judges tell you whether or not you win or not. Like powerlifting is much more like football, baseball. For sure. Like you, you, you lift the weight or you don't. Yeah. Like the judges are just look. They're just very gonna, objective. They're just going to make sure you touch your chest when you bench and you're going to do a, a deadlift and, and get full extension. That's it. The judge is not going to look at you versus another guy and go, "Well, his bench press looked prettier, therefore 
Now nah, you move the weight or you don't. I, I also like the idea of that even if let, let's say our long term goal is to eventually get on a bodybuilding stage, going the powerlifting route first is only gonna, is going to serve you way better because mm -hmm. it will it'll it, it's going to force you to get really strong, build lots of uh, uh, build lots of muscle, also not do any sort of metabolic damage because you're in a place where you need to be able to perform, and so you'll be so centered around that. And then when you're like, shit, I'm stronger mm -hmm. and leaner than I've ever been right now. Now let's take it to the bodybuilding thing. You'll be in a better position to prep for a show from there than you than you would totally. just going straight for prepping for a show right now totally. and so if we have any influence on you i think we're all in alignment i would push you towards the the powerlifting meet and if you do choose to do this one i'd love to give you maps power lift and then two i'd love to put you in the forum and be there to help guide you through this process okay yeah um i think I think you guys, because I was teetering on going either way, and I think you guys kind of convinced me to go the powerlifting route because I think, like you said, the competitive nature is it just it's objective right there. Yeah. So win or lose, you got to do it. So right. I right. think uh, that's the best way to go through it. The ir the irony yep. is if you if you're doing things like tracking your protein, watching your diet, make sure you eat healthy, you'll end up with a better physique in a year doing powerlifting competitions yeah. than you will bodybuilding. Straight up. Where where are you at? Um, give me an idea where you're at calorie wise, and then tell me where your lifts are at. I'm kind of I want to know your starting point here. Um, so calorie wise, I am at uh, I let's say over the holidays I didn't track as well as I wanted to. So I'm yeah, let's say when you're track when you're tracking, tell me where you're at. So when I'm tracking, when I'm when I've been dropping the weight about a pound and a half a week, I was about at. Three thirty-two hundred calories. Okay. Okay. You're all right. Good. Good. You're right. You're good. good. That's what I wanted to hear. I didn't want to hear something like eighteen hundred or two thousand calories. No. Yeah. Right. To do no. That. No. I. I don't think I could ever go to that. I like <laughs> yeah, you know what, though? By the way, that's exactly what happens to bodybuilding competitors. Though, is they end up pushing themselves to those low, low calories just to just to keep the the weight loss going, the weight loss going, right. and so and that's what we're afraid of is you're so focused on the stage day that you start to throw out what's best for your body where you won't get like that in powerlifting because it's, there's no benefit to you being that low of calorie and, mm -hmm. you know, leaning or losing that much weight right before a powerlifting meet. So I think right. the powerlifting, I, I think you're in a good place already calorie wise. So we're, I think you're in a really good place to do this. And then, Hey, let's, let's assess after the powerlifting meet. Um, if you're still thinking about the bodybuilding thing, and I think you'd be in a much better position. You like the show. atmosphere of a powerlifting meet too, man. Being an athlete, it's going to feel so, it's going to feel familiar. I like it. Okay, cool. Yep. No, yep. No, yep. All right, dude. We're going to send over maps, power lift, and then get you in the All form. Right. Make sure you say hi and let us know when you start the process. I will. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate everything you guys have done and taking my question today. You got it, man. Appreciate right on, Anthony. You, man. Nice to meet you guys. Have a good one. If 90% of the people that competed in bodybuilding. And I say 90% because that probably encompasses like the average, like people competing at local shows and stuff, right? There's that 10% that are like highly competitive. But if you took a majority of people who tried bodybuilding shows and put them in powerlifting, they'd be better off. Oh, yeah. How many they'd be better uh, would off. you say, like, I know Arnold had a bit of a background yeah. in powerlifting. I know there was other examples of like famous bodybuilders yeah. that started there and then yeah. their physiques look amazing. Yeah, Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman. Ronnie Coleman's oh, the other one. Yeah. Franco Colombo. That's yeah. another one. So, and two, I mean, and we, we've stressed this a lot, I think, with women in terms of like being yeah. able to get, because it's, it's less, uh, uh, I guess you see it less. Yeah. Um, and, and so to get them, you know, focus on strength is, is such, so transformative. Well, a guy like this who's lo losing so much weight. If he went into a bodybuilding, my, my fear, which I think would be caught, would probably happen is he'd over diet to the point 100%. where he would, and then he would, he would, he would revert. He would be screwed. Yeah. He'd go right back and gain yeah. all the weight back. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I wanted totally. to know where he was at calorie wise. And then make that point that you be, you will get down. You, that's what they do is they start off at 32 and then the weight yeah. loss slows yeah, and down like 1200 calories. and they're so focused like, Oh shit, I'm on stage in 16 weeks. Yep. So I need to do this. And so you start, you just start doing that because you don't care about how strong you are. You don't even care how you feel. You don't care about your no, fitness. No, you can, you're trying to get down to a size to, you know, do well on stage and you just throw out everything else. And so it's just not, I tell you what, these, uh, when we get callers like this, this is a part, I, this is my favorite part of what we do. Like I just yeah. hearing somebody like that where they, they get thrown in jail because he's had so many DUIs, the pro level of depression and shit where he's at. And to see him 
turn his life around right now and then oh, and yeah. then make health oh, and fitness. Love it's it. amazing. I love so, it. so cool, man. Keep going, Anthony. Our next caller is Adam from Wisconsin. Adam, what's up, man? How can we help you? Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me on and appreciate your time and just really everything you do for the community. I know you hear that a lot, but begs repeating multiple times. So thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Um, wanted to um, ask a quick question about folks that um, – uh, myself included, who have engaged in professional co- coaching, had a, a trainer, um, a nutritionist um, over a period of time, and now are looking to kind of transition out and are feeling empowered to do that work on their own. And wonder if you have any advice for folks that have um, navigated into that space and, and what you would advise them to kind of take as first steps um, navigating this stuff on the, on their own. Well, that's a cool question. How long, are you, I, yeah, how long have you been with a coach and how many times are they seeing you right now per week? Uh, uh, for a year and, um, check-ins are once a week. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that whole time, it looks like you did like reverse dieting. And so everything's good now. You're at this nice stable place. Yeah. I went up from over basically over a, a year from about 2000 calories, a little short of 2000 calories now up to 3,100. Um, and in that time period actually dropped some, some weight, uh, along the way, which is, um, confusing, but here we are. Uh, <laughs> So, so yeah, so, but feeling at that stage where, you know, I've got the tools in my tool belt and kind of want to take a path on my own. Awesome. Uh, Adam, what are your, what are your worries of going on your own? Cause you've been with them for a year. So you, you have a good idea of kind of what to eat, what to look for and feel. And, but I'm assuming you feel a little apprehensive and that's why you're asking this question. What are your fears? I appreciate uh, the way you framed that. Um, not necessarily fears, but just more of, um, kind of questioning, well, what, what do I do when, um, I don't have someone that's, you know, checking my calories, checking my macros, um, saying, Hey, are you aligned? Not, not necessarily accountability, but just more about where do I go from here? Yeah. Um, not having a goal or a strategy or someone to check that past. So maybe that's, maybe, maybe that's an answer to your question. Have, there. have you thought about, cause I know that Sal was actually notorious for this. As far as the three of us, he did this the most is, is actually, scaling down to once a month before you go completely. Cold I was turkey. just going to say that. Like, like because if you feel, if you don't feel like fully comfortable going on your own. And even if it's not, he's fully comfortable, even if you just appreciate the accountability. That's right. That's yeah. what I mean. Like, and if, so it's a yeah. valuable investment. When Get once a month, plan, yeah. once a month, you reduce your cost by one fourth and now you, and, and you, but yet you still have that accountability that, Oh, I'm going to yeah. have to see, see Sal on, you know, Monday of next week. I it's better like make peace of mind for you. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, have you considered that? No, it's a great, it's a great framing, uh, of that. I kind of was doing the, the false binary of it's one or the other. Uh, <laughs> so it's a great, a great, a great, a uh, yes. And there. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a scaling down, right? Cause you're going from working with someone to nothing at all. Uh, that can be challenging. It just can, because it's completely different. Um, but you know, you could go, you could go once every other week or once a month. That's what I would do. So if you were my, if you were my client and you voiced this to me, like, okay, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm coming up on this and you know, I'm not sure how I want to do this on my own. That's what I would offer to you. I'd say, well, I can meet with you mm-hmm. every other week or we can meet once a month and then let's just take it from there. And then that's a, it's a much more gradual process yeah, sure. and you get more time on your own feel it out. And then from there, you eventually get to the point where you're on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Which is kind of more, um, the space that I was framing the question in. Cause it's, it's maybe I was motivated to say, you know, I don't really need this anymore. I don't know if you've had clients, yeah. um, <clears throat> excuse me, in your experience where you're like, no, nah, I feel, and that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. Like I feel, I feel good, but I still have goals and I still want to crush them. And so what are, what are the mechanisms out there for, kind of someone like me that is is moving from a space where you're, you're kind of outsourced that thinking and now totally. you're yeah. mm-hmm. going, okay, it's a blank blank slate. I can do kind of whatever I want with this. Yeah, no. So mm-hmm. the conversation with your coach is exactly that. It's like, okay, I'd like to slowly transition to being on my own. So I'd like to meet with you less frequently. And I would like for some of our coaching to be centered around how I can start to figure out some of the stuff on my own. So what you don't want to do is work with someone let's say once every two weeks, and then they give you everything to do over the next two weeks. So it's really not that different. The only difference is you're not checking in as often. So then the coaching changes a little. So like the way that it would, like typical client for me, there were people I trained for 10 years, you know, 12 years nonstop. 
And typically what it would look like is someone would start with me two days a week, then they'd go three days a week, then they'd go down to two days a week, then they'd go down to one day a week, then they'd go down to one day every other week. And then I had clients who were with me once a month mm-hmm. who had then, you know, had been with me for 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 12 years. And it worked out perfectly. And then some of them just stopped and they were on their own. But a lot of them just went down that path because they appreciated the check-in, the meeting, the maybe I need some new exercises or I got this new pain or whatever, because, you know, I'm the expert and they're not type of deal. But it was a, it really, in terms of, uh, improving sustainability with my clients, it was one of the key factors that played a role. Sal did this the most, but I I did do this also. The clients that I did do it with, the way it looked like for me was you actually would see me that once a month. And it was more, you actually telling me everything. Mm -hmm. I was just there to like, give you the like thumbs up, like, oh yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. Good call on that. Or, oh, you know what, you probably should have scaled this a little bit slower or you know what, maybe it's time that we change this routine out for that routine or like, you know what, let's stop that. Or you know what, your that's your knees bothering you. Let me do some things. Like they were you really, they were leading everything at that point. And I was just there to be that authority to go like, hey, great job. Or, oh, you might want to consider this. Or like Sal said, if there's like something that has been troubling you for that month, you would bring it to me when we, and we get a good, we're normally good friends. We've been working, we've been training together for a year or years at this time. And so, you know, we enjoy the workout together and seeing each other and catching up. So there's, there's nice camaraderie around that. And then it's like, literally you're telling me what's going on. And I'm just kind of there to kind of guide you along and give you a high five along the way. I had a lot of success with that. I think my clients really enjoyed that. And, you know, if, if it, uh, financially, if it's something that's feasible to you, I think there's a lot of value and especially if it's a really good coach, if you really respect this person as like, man, this guy or girl knows their shit. And, uh, obviously way more than I, they do in this profession, you know? And so there's a lot of value just having that person to see once a month, regardless if you could do it all on your own, just having that, that brain to, 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 you know, bounce things off of. Well, and to kind of, yeah, kind of piggyback off the, what they're saying. Um, this, this is what led us into also like really, um, crafting these programs the way that we did. So that way too, it's like one kind of leads into the next, which leads into the next. And you can kind of draw that out in terms of like the entire year. So that way it's not like guesswork in terms of like, well, you know, if I'm just trying to be healthy, I have sort of like a a path that I can take, you know, in that direction to stay strong and keep my muscle mass as is, or if I want to like really test myself and challenge myself in this part of the year. Uh, So I don't know, like, you know, if he has you on very specific plans that you could then, you know, sort of take that and then run with it. And then you just check in with him, um, you know, or if this is just based off of like nutrition of that, that I was like more of your concern was like, I did this nutritionally, you know, the training I'm sort of, I got, have that down but like i need more help with this no it's a uh, um i appreciate the kind of the framework and and i don't know if this has been your experience or if you've heard from other trainers but it kind of seems like they present it as like this is the package like i have i have option a and option yeah. a is this is the way it works this is the cost for it and so i haven't even thought of the alternative there so yeah. I, I, yeah. i'm grateful well to, show this video to your your trainer or coach because they need to th- this is a good thing for a train for a coach uh, to understand because what happens is they've, what he, what they've done, you know, without realizing, cause I know if, when you bring this up, they're gonna be like, Oh yeah, let's do that. What they've done is presented you with the, this false idea that it's over afterwards, but yeah. that's not really how it works. So yeah, they, they I a hundred percent, they're going to be like, totally, let's do that. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Awesome. Thanks guys. Appreciate you. you right on, Adam. Thanks for calling in. You know, one thing I like to focus on there, just for all the haters out there, the reverse dieting, you don't speed up your metal. <laughs> he went up a thousand calories in his lean. He lost weight. And that's countless people <laughs> yeah, are yeah. like that. So yes, yeah. you could totally do it. You could totally do it. Yeah. It takes a little bit of time. You got to do it the right way. What but. do you, what do you uh, psychology or sales? What do you think he was in? Oh, him? Psycho- oh yeah. Some kind of. Yeah. Uh, he, he, I, he, he, he. He multiple times talked about reframing. Mm-hmm. He also did the uh, and yes. So either he's got sales training in him or he's or psychology. Or he's in improv classes. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <kids>. <laughs> I want to know, Adam. So when you e- email in or, or DM me one or the other, I'm yeah. just curious. I meant to ask him and, and then we got carried away on other questions. But, you know, I think that when you find, I have a client like this still to this day. Uh, you know, when you find a good trainer and coach that, you know, there's no question in your mind, like their level of education experience yeah. is going to, it'll always exceed yours because it's their profession. You do something completely different and you can afford to keep someone like that in your life once a month. 
there's tremendous value. Huge, in that. huge mm-hmm. value. Because I, I, you know, uh, I mean, shoot, I was just doing this with Sal. Like, I have family that reaches out to me. I still default to hit to Sal. Uh, help me out with answering stuff with my own family, and just the fact. Obviously, it's that I'm their family, so that I'm not charging them to do that. But imagine they didn't have me. Like the value of being able to go, like, oh my God, you know, Uncle So and So is going through this, or yeah. and like you know, when you have a profession, a professional like that that you can rely on, and if you can afford to yeah. do that, so much. I value. think professionals really need to consider this in today's age. Like just a text message. Like if they have that totally. as an option, like you know, every now and then I can kind of text you or like you know keep me accountable like because people do want to be able to have like somebody they can uh, refer to as they're going through you know on their own so i think it's a viable option. bro as a, i actually was teaching kyle this the other day when we were doing this stuff for the trainers and for all the trainers that are listening right now i think that should be your your last drop it's or your cheapest low, thing yeah is that you have this offer that's you know a hundred bucks a month and that's all it is that's right. but it gives digital access to you all the time mm-hmm. for them to be able to text and ask questions and do stuff stuff like that and yep. you'll and you'll answer a lot of value in that our next caller is katie from ontario hi katie hi katie how can we help you hey how's it going guys good, good. what's happening good um so first of all i just want to say thank you um after listening to your advice i was able to reverse diet myself out of a pretty bad situation a few years ago um i was overtraining, under fueling and sort of messed myself up hormonally a little bit <laughs> And so since then, I've gone through a few mini bulks and cuts. My problem is um, cutting makes me feel terrible. (laughs) It makes me feel like trash. My workouts suffer. Um, I'm exhausted and it just makes me feel awful. So goal wise, um, I guess I could stand to lose a little bit of body fat, but it's not really that important to me, to be honest. Um, I have a decent amount of muscle. Uh, what I do want to focus on, though, is getting stronger um, and just feeling good in my body and having more um, energy. So I'd like to push the calories back up again. But if I notice that I'm putting on some body fat um, more than I'm comfortable with, I'm just wondering how I can mitigate that um, without a drastic cut and feeling like crap again. Yeah, great question. There's two ways to get leaner, body fat percentage wise, Katie. Option one is to lose actual body fat. Option two is to build muscle and keep the amount of body fat you have on your body the same. Because remember, body fat percentage is a percentage of overall body weight. In other words, if you gained five pounds of muscle, you're now leaner, even though you didn't lose a pound of body fat. So reverse dieting slowly and focusing on strength will accomplish uh, both of those for you. Now, if you reverse diet and you say, "Uh oh, I think I'm gaining too much body fat, you just reverse a lot slower or pause pause the reverse and see if you can, or, or reverse out of it just a little bit. So let's say you went up 200 calories this week and then you stayed like that for a couple of weeks. You're like, oh, I'm putting a little bit of body fat. Bring it down again, bring it down maybe 100, 150 and just keep it there and just play that little game, that little step ladder game of bringing the calories up or maintaining while focusing on, on performance in the gym and getting stronger. That's going to serve you uh, in the best way. You know, an exercise I used to do with my clients when we were going through something like this, and this is all for the psychological uh, aspect of, I feel like I'm getting fatter at them because we're adding all these calories and we're in this mini bulk. And many times that feeling that they have is just, they're holding a little bit more water. They have more ca- carbs, so glycogen in their muscles. And so they feel a certain way. Maybe they are, they're inflamed a tiny bit because we train really hard or and a lot of the times it's not that they're putting body fat on. They just feel this certain way. And then a lot of times they, they course correct and, and go the other direction. So one of these exercises I used to love to do with my client is as we're in this reverse diet and I think they're doing great, we're slowly increasing calories, they're getting stronger and they report back, Adam, I feel like I'm getting a little fatter and putting body fat on. I go, okay, tomorrow we're going to do a 24 hour fast. And I put them on a fast. And then I'd say, how do you feel? Oh my God, I feel, I feel so much better. I say, listen, we didn't lose any pounds of fat today. We didn't do that in one day. One day did not lose a pound of body fat even on you. All we did was bring down inflammation. We depleted your glycogen. And so you look like you're less full right now. So it's not that you're fat and it's not that you're putting fat on right now. We're just, we got a lot of calories in us. We're reverse dieting. This is total, this is a total normal process. So I love to do that. And sometimes that's a good exercise. If you're not, if you don't have coach and trainer, it's a great little exercise to do to yourself just to make sure you keep yourself in check. When you have those feelings, instead of going on this long cut or now depleting calories for extended period of time, do a fast 
and see how you feel and look after that. Yeah. And a, a lot of times that will solve that and you'll be like, oh, wow, I feel great. Just, or don't, I look just great. don't overcorrect is the main thing here. Yeah. Do you, how do you judge whether or not you're gaining excess body fat? What, 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 do you have an objective metric that you use or is it based off of just feel? So I'm, I want to get more into the place where I can... I'm gauging based on, you know, how my clothes are fitting or how I'm feeling. I stopped weighing myself last week awesome. <laughs> because to be honest, I was, you know, messing with my head a little bit, right? Like there would be times I weigh myself, my, you know, my weight's up, but I look at myself and I feel like I look great, yep. right? But the scale was still screwing with my head too much. Yep. So I decided that that is not, the scale's not my friend. So I ditched that. Um, so yeah, the metric that I really want to use is just how I'm feeling and how, like even how I look, but based Good. on that judgment, right? Yeah, the, the scale becomes our God. And, and and that God will tell you, you're going to have a good day or you're going to have a bad day, regardless of what's actually going on. So you did a good job by by tossing the scale. You could get a body fat caliper test. Uh, as, uh, do you go to a gym? Yeah, so you might be able to ask a trainer there, hey, can I get a body fat test with you, you know, once every three weeks or something like that. And then just look at the trend. That's another way to do it. How your clothes fit, that's another way to do it. But I, I like performance in the gym and clothes, how your clothes fit and then how you feel in the gym. And by the way, if you're building a little bit of muscle in certain areas like the hamstrings or glutes, that means your pants may feel tighter in that area, but they tend to feel looser in the waist, you know, type of deal. Sometimes my female clients would freak out because their shirts might feel tighter, but that's because their posture straightened out. Maybe they got maybe a little bit more deltoid development. Um, so, you know, it's really, it's, it's a lot of this is in our heads and it's, it starts oh, to mess with us. A lot of it's in here. I mean, sodium can manipulate this with water. You can, uh, have a poor night's sleep and a little bit of extra stress in your life. Yeah. And then the body gets inflamed. And like, there's a lot of things that could really change the way our clothes fit, feel, and the way you look in the mirror day to day. And so if, and I like the idea of the body fat percentage once every three weeks, but here's the rule that I would have if you were my client also is that. This is our plan. We're going to reverse diet. We're adding these calories. You go, I'm going to go take my body fat test. You test it. And then you're like, oh, Adam, I feel like we're putting, I'm putting on body fat or I don't feel like we're going the right direction. I would want you to feel that way and make it through another body fat test to confirm that that's what's happening before I let you course correct. Because you could just be having a day or three days in a row of just that kind of feeling. And then once that water gets out and then once the yeah. inflammation comes down, all of a sudden you're feeling better. And what I didn't, I don't want to do with you is course correct and go the other direction before we gave it some time to see like, yeah. oh, let's let that inflammation come down. Let's see how you feel in a week or two from what? now. So, you know, when you, and three weeks, by the way, in a slight reverse diet calorie surplus is not going to put on a crazy amount of body fat. So when you get that feeling of you want to course correct, make sure you stack two body fat tests back to back in a row. I did one this week. I didn't like how the results were, but I'm still not going to course correct. I'm going to stick with it for another three weeks. And then if it still is trending in the wrong direction, okay, I can course correct. But a lot of times what will happen is within that week or two, it'll even out, body will respond, and then you'll see positive results. And then you're normally like, okay, I just need to stay the course. Yeah. How do you, how do you feel otherwise? I feel great. Um, my sleep's pretty good. Um, you know, I was, I had to, I was running as well, um, running two times a week. So I, um, you know, going to the gym, doing a program four times a week, I was running twice since my last, um, cut started like mid December. I don't have the energy to run, <laughs> um, just tired all the time. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I needed to cut that out. But other than that, like before that in December, when my calories were higher, when they were like 2,500, I felt amazing. Like my sleep was good. I had good yep, energy, yep. you know, woke up like right away, not groggy. Um, so everything else was great. Just, just lift, just lift. I, I would cut the cardio out. unless you like the stamina and the endurance, the running endurance, which if you do, that's fine. But I, I wouldn't even do the running. I would just walk. If your goal is just to feel fit, lean, strong, and capable. Again, if you want that kind of endurance, you're going to only, you're only going to be able to get it if you run. But otherwise I would cut that out. I would walk and I would train in to build muscle and strength, slowly reverse diet, and you're going to get leaner from doing that. That's what's going to happen. The, the body fat percentage will go down, but you will mess with your head if you use metrics to, to gauge progress too frequently. But obviously the scale, you, you took that out, wonderful, get rid of it, don't even have it in your house. But even circumference measurements, even body fat, like if you get addicted to those, those can even start to mess with your head a little bit because what they do is they tell you what you're feeling is wrong. 
Yeah. Oh, I feel good. Oh, uh -oh, but the scale said this. Oh, now I don't feel good. Or I feel like crap, but the scale went down. I feel good now. It's like, it literally takes you out of your body and it becomes your God dictating to you how you're supposed to feel. And you don't, you don't want that. It's going to, it's not going to direct you in the right way. This is why I want two two bad body fat tests in a row before we even, which and is you wait six, three weeks, which is six weeks. Yeah. That's three weeks, three weeks. That's, That's right. six weeks before you make any drastic decisions because a lot can happen in that. Totally. And a lot of times you're just testing it on a wrong day that it didn't test good. And so don't allow that one test or one scale way to, to deter you. So that would be my advice if you do the body yeah. fat percentage. You want to know what's funny? You're, you want to hear a true story? This 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 is a trip. I stopped testing body fat percentages and weighing people probably the last, I don't know, nine years of my career. And I got way better results with all my clients, all of them. And I stopped doing them completely. Didn't do them at all. Unless somebody asked me and it was whatever, but I just stopped doing them and people got way better results. I think they're more of a negative than a positive for the most part. Yeah, that makes sense. And I 100% agree. I found that I don't want some sort of external metric like that dictating <laughs> uh, my progress because I, I felt that I would look a certain way, be happy and then weigh myself and then feel bad about it for for no reason. That's right. Um, with respect to the frequency of like how many calories to increase when going through this, mm -hmm. um, you know, I have in the past just done gone really, really slowly um, and just done like 100, wait a few weeks hundred, wait a few weeks. Um, would you recommend that kind of frequency? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. You could do a hundred every two weeks, uh, 150 every two weeks, um, depending on the individual. But if you feel comfortable doing that, there's nothing wrong with it yeah, whatsoever. Like and, and, and listen, fall in love with how you feel in the gym, fall in love with your energy throughout the day. Those will be far better guides than everything else. Awesome. Thank you. You got it. Thanks for calling in. Thank you. I bet you guys did the same thing. Did you guys test body fat and weigh people towards the back half of your career? If I did, I actually didn't Front let them half. know. Yeah. yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 I I like, we were taught to do it. Yeah. Like, this is what you're supposed to do to track your clients. Then we we all figured out it was better if we didn't. I mean, you know me. I like all the metrics. I enjoy, yeah. I appreciate all that stuff to kind of factor it into my kept decision. It to yourself. But yeah, I kept yeah. it to myself. That's what I, did. I learned. I learned that letting them know was a bad idea because then that would throw their throw them off. Like, it was more of a records thing for me. So I would, yeah, I would take it all and then I would like uh, periodically I would kind of go back and test things. But yeah, I wouldn't show them or like really pay a lot of attention to that. It was really just focused on the training and the nutrition that they were doing. And complete transparency. This came really full circle or I really, really fully grasped this when I competed because never did I ever have to track to the level I had to. And boy, did I go through many times where I thought, what the fuck? I'm doing mm -hmm. something wrong. And I had to trust the process. I had planned this all out. I was tracking yeah. so diligently. Like I, the scale I, or whatever. Yeah, I knew the math. Thing. But man, and and the mirror. You know, that's why I'm like, when I tell people, like, you got to be careful because, you know, I I remember seeing a, a high sodium day, a, a inflammation day of these. And then yeah, I look in the mirror and I go, oh, fuck. Mm -hmm. Like something's wrong. I ate too much yesterday. And it's like, you have this, you want to the very next day, go cut the calories, get on the cardio or do something. And you do this drastic course, correct. And so you got to let the, you have to let the days kind of play out. And it's like, man, just be careful before you, you, you correct every single time. Cause a lot of times you, your body is, it's just holding a little bit of extra water due to multiple different factors. And you had no idea, but you were doing perfect. Our next caller is Dwayne from Texas. Dwayne, what's up, man? What up, Dwayne? Yeah. Hey, how's it going? Howdy from East Texas, y'all. What's going on? You got it, dude. What's happening? Hey, uh, um, first of all, I just want to say thank you uh, for having me on. And, uh, man, you guys have really changed my life. Um, I haven't worked out, like, pretty much my whole adult life, right? High school is the last time I saw a weight room. And uh, started getting into um, just losing weight because I got really out of shape overweight and uh did it you know the wrong way like everybody does to start with um got on weight watchers lost uh 40 pounds and uh within a couple months of getting off weight watchers gained half of it back so decided that wasn't even close to sustainable so started doing a lot of research and uh started counting macros tracking my calories and everything and uh then started getting into fitness decided you know i needed to get in shape and and um Joined a couple online boot camps and didn't really necessarily enjoy those. But since it's been so long since I worked out, I really didn't know any exercises or how to work out. Uh, luckily, very early into 
um, starting to lift. I found you guys. Started listening to your bod- podcast, digesting your podcast, and uh, bought some programs. Started with y'all's programs, and it has totally transformed my life. And not only my life, but seeing the progress I've made. My wife has started strength training, and now my seventy-one-year-old mom is a month into strength training as well. So nice. you got changing, you know, my life, but you're changing a whole lot of lives. Your, your reach is a lot farther than just your listeners. So thank you. Hell thank you. Yeah. Hell yeah. I love hearing that, man. Yeah. So how, how long now have you been since you found mind pump? Is this been months, years? Cause you would have fooled me by saying that you just got going on, on working out. Yeah, especially <laughs> with that sick ass weight. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You're all in, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, all in. Absolutely. When I get into something, I go all in. So yeah, I built a home gym and, uh, that way I could never have an excuse not to work out. Um, but no, I've been, I've been following mind pump programs for a little over eight months now and working out consistently for about a year and a half. Nice. Excellent. Beautiful. Excellent. Good stuff, dude. Yeah. Great. What you got for us? You have a question? Okay. Um, I've always been interested in you know, individual sports, not much of a team sports guy, but I've always loved individual sports. And I think because of that, I'm kind of drawn towards bodybuilding. So I really want to, on my 50th birthday, which is just a little over four years away, get on stage for men's physique. I hear you guys, you know, talk about if you chase health, you'll get aesthetics as well. If you chase aesthetics, you don't get either. So my question is, as a relatively new lifter, I want to follow mind pump programs. I want to chase health and do it in a, in a healthy way to where in about four years, I can have a physique that I'm proud of to present on stage in a men's physique. I don't have to win. I just want to be proud of my, my physique that I present. Dude, this yeah. is so crazy. You're asking <laughs> this because just two callers ago, yeah. we got a guy who is, he is his goal by his 40th birthday. So he's coming up on his 40th birthday and wanted to so, do the exact same thing. And I think our advice is going to sound the same. Yeah. Uh, to for be, you. Look, to be clear, similar. when it, competing in a stage presentation sport like physique or bodybuilding or for, for women bikini or fitness or figure, there there is there's a healthier way to do it, but there isn't a healthy way to do it. Um, I remember when Adam was competing, in fact, we started the show and he was still in competition competition uh, mode and he would tell everybody, all right, guys, I'm entering into the unhealthy por- portion of prep. Um, those, th- they're not pro health. Now, bodybuilding from a workout perspective, build mu- muscle perspective, consistency perspective can be very healthy. Competing in bodybuilding is not, okay? Um, that being said, if you want to compete in something, and hit a goal and look good doing it and do it in a way where you're going to, you know, you're, you're going to, your health will be great and all that stuff. Powerlifting would be a much better place to compete in. Have you, have you thought about doing like a strength based sport like powerlifting? Um, not really. No, but I think I would definitely be interested in, in something like that. Um, like I said, I like individual competition Yeah, and definitely, you know, y'all's programs have definitely steered me in the right directions towards strength. My, all of my lifts have gone up dramatically. Um, I've done, I started with map starter and did anabolic, then performance. And now I'm uh, doing maps aesthetic. I'm in the second week of maps aesthetic, just about done with week two. Yeah, well, I, I, want, I want to address a couple of things. One, you should be very proud of the physique that you yeah, walk man. around in already right now, dude. At 40, so in yeah. your, your mid 40s, it, to look the way you look yeah, currently crazy right now, transformation. You, look, you look phenomenal. So I first want to address, address that. And then just like the other guy, uh, I wouldn't tell you that we can't do bodybuilding, but I would tell you, Let's let's do the powerlifting first because it's going to set you up for bodybuilding anyways. Yeah. Because that uh, strength is the foundation of all pursuits, and so if we focus on getting you strong as fuck, building your metabolism up, and we really go in that direction, right? Competing in in powerlifting, and then you're gonna be, and I think you're gonna be happy with the way your physique looks. You're gonna be stronger than you ever been, which is also gonna result in probably a faster metabolism because we're not gonna be dieting like a bodybuilder, yeah. which will only put you in a position to get ready for a bodybuilding show. So if you were a client of mine and you did want to ultimately do men's physique, I would actually first go, let's do a powerlifting yeah, meet. Let's totally. go that direction. We're going to build your metabolism. We're going to build yeah. some strength along the way. Your physique is going to continue to change and look great, but we're not focused on the cardio, hard-cutting calorie aspect that physique does t- tend to attract. 
and we're focused more on the metrics in the gym of your strength, your bench is going up, your squat is going up. We're feeding the body enough so you're not depleted. Like those things are so important to powerlifting and they're not important to bodybuilding. And where you're currently at in your stage, that's where I want you first. And then afterwards, after we do our first powerlifting meet, and you check that box if you're like, all right, Adam, let's go, let's go, let's go bodybuilding now. I would love Pack to take on you that all the muscle that you can, man. Keep that strength focus. It's it's such a healthier pursuit that then is going to reveal itself. Like you know, the further down you go, I know this is like uh, what you say, the eight months like recently of doing you know our programming. I think like you, there's so much more to explore. Oh, bro, you're, you're- it, it's just going to keep going. And and at that point too, um, you know, like it's not out of the question to then step on stage. Uh, but you know, you're going to establish a really good foundation to then you just make, you know, little tweaks in, in, in your diet and you can kind of, uh, get to the point where now you feel comfortable, uh, going in that. Pursuit. Yeah. And there, there's no shortage of, pow- of, of, of good, small local powerlifting competitions in Texas. You'll yeah. Be able oh to- yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Even gr- strongman competitions. They're great, yeah. dude. You're yeah. gr- I think you'll enjoy that. And it's great. It's great competition and it's not going to take you away from health. The only detriment to powerlifting is sometimes people will they'll disregard joint pain or they'll they'll not focus on mobility. Yep. So that's the only thing I'd I'd say keep in mind if you start to notice, you know, because your strength is going up so much and you're only doing you're doing the same kind of movements and you start to get a little joint pain, you know, you back out a little bit, do some mobility, maybe do map symmetry for a sec- for a cycle, go back to powerlifting. But other than that, man, that's listen, that's we'll, the way to go. We'll we'll be there with you if you're open to this. If you're open to doing the powerlifting, I would love to do the same thing that we just did with the other guy two callers ago and give you maps power lift, put you in the private forum with us. And as you're going through the process, keep us in the loop. Yep. Let us know how it's going and what's going on and we can help make adjustments to the diet or if like you to Sal's point, if you start to notice achy joints or something going on will help correct course and, and and put you on some mobility stuff to fix that. But if you're open to it, I, I, w- I would love to see you do that first. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've got maps power lift oh. and I'm in. The- so, oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, All right. Well, shit, I'll give you a, what, when it's time for bodybuilding, I'll hook you up with maps have, aesthetic. You have that already? Yeah, <laughs> he's on it right now. Do you have, do you have maps, uh, P- uh, prime pro? I have prime prime pro. I have pretty much every program we y'all have. have. Okay. <laughs> OCR and hit and stuff. The 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 more cardio and the shit you don't need. Yeah. <laughs> you get all. <laughs> well, well, I guess we're we'll just gonna have to help you out in the forum then. Make yeah. sure when you get in there and you and you start power lift, give us a heads up at the starting point. And I'd love to see you know I don't know each phase updates on your your big lifts. Yep. You know I'd love to see how they're moving and and what the, where the weights at and then and then of course use that as a resource if you have questions nutritionally or things like that. But bro, you're doing really good, man. Yeah. You're doing really good. And and I am I am very proud of what I've accomplished you so far. Be. Started you should be two hundred pounds and totally out of shape and you know two hundred three pounds now and a whole lot of muscle. Yeah. I went eating 2,200 calories, trying to lose weight. So now I eat 3,200 calories That's and sick. I've got to start adding more because I'm starting to lose weight at, th- at 3,200. Oh, you're on yeah, fire, fuck dude. Fuck yeah, bro. You're on fire. And this is perfect for power lift right now. Reverse diet and do power lift. Yeah, you got it, dude. Yeah, I love that. Awesome. Yeah, I really appreciate it. You got it, Dwayne. All right, Dwayne, we'll see you inside the forum, man. Yeah, Thank you. in the loop. <clears throat> I know we don't normally do this, but I want his before and after in there because the one I saw, I, I like it. We heard from him so people can hear from him and see what the process was. 2,200 calories to 3,200 calories and look at the difference before and after. Yeah. yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, not unbelievable. Ha- we've seen that, but he was consistent. He did it right. And I think powerlifting competition is the right direction. A bodybuilding show would 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 probably present and cause potential damage. Yeah, what bro, doing. you know how sick that is? He's 45 years old, dude, okay? He's every bit our, older than each of us in here right now, except for Doug. And he is literally looking the probably the best he's ever looked in his life. Looks incredible, dude. And what a cool story where he's at. So cool. Metabolically yeah. right now. Keep it up, Dwayne. Keep it up. Look, if you love the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our fitness guides. We have free fitness guides that can help you with your fitness or health goal, health goals. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.